will be sitting on Thursday and Friday to consider the RAPEX bills. It's not a usual thing that we sit on a Friday, but because of pressure from your government chief whip, from government, that we they need the RAPEX bills, and I'm also aware that most of the bills are ready, so we should be sitting to make sure that we finish. And uh, I understand why they want the RAPEX bills, because now we are doing budgeting, and some of these institutions are not getting money. So I think they want to get them out of the way. So we'll sit and consider that. Honourable members, we shall, we, we shall also be sitting next week after the RAPEX bills to consider the tax bills. The tax bills were laid on table and they are being considered. But I want to add, urge the chairperson of finance that as you consider these bills, you should be able to to get the stakeholders and consult the stakeholders on these bills. Let's not only make bills that help us in this house, but you should have public consultation so that we don't get problems like the problems we are getting right now. Let's have public consultation, hear from people on what they think about these bills, for instance, somebody came to me and was telling me, just imagine they want to tax on a purchase of land or a sale of land. Assuming you, you are a civil servant, you've got that money, that money that you've gotten out of, out of what you're doing has been taxed. Yes. The land that you're buying, for you to transfer that land, you must pay a tax. And then again, when you sell that land, you again pay. So that is triple taxation. So we need to understand. We need to consult the stakeholders to this effect so that we make laws, we make taxes that favor the country. I want to also urge Attorney General to be considerate when we are doing all these things. Honorable members, that must be done. I want to see an advert that there will be a public consultation on the taxes that we are going to pass. Honorable members, I am aware that tomorrow may be a day. You never know. No, 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 no. You leave only us who are Muslims to speak. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to wish our Muslim brothers and sisters a happy Eid, and may the Allah, may the Allah's blessings illuminating all your path of joy and happiness and fulfill all what you've been praying for. Amen. I know some Alan has been praying for something. <laughs> On rather sudden note, we received the information this afternoon about the unfortunate demise of um, the retired Colonel Obaile Nelson. The retired Colonel was a father to Honorable Lillian Obaile, the Rua, Arua District Woman MP, and the battle is stated for 13th April 20, 2024 in Arua. We want to condone with the family, and those who will be willing to go to Arua, we will ensure that we provide transport for those going to Arua for burial. Honorable members, please support our colleague who has lost a parent. 
and may the soul of Nelson rest in internal peace. Honorable members, you will allow me to amend the order paper to include redesignations of members and the first reading of some RAPEX bills. We had others, but then we added other bills. So we'll amend the order paper to that effect. I want to thank you so, so much for coming. Yes, Mehdi? Patrick, congratulations. You won in PAP. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I would like to bring it to your attention that the CBD, which is the Central Business District, which I represent in this parliament, has been undergoing a sit-down strike from our traders. The business persons of this country who contribute a lot in form of taxation and in form of development of our nation are hurt, are boiling, And right, Honorable Speaker, the reason is exactly what you did through your communication. One, the high-handed methods used by the Uganda Revenue Authority in execution of its cardinal statutory duties of farming taxes. But also, our inconsideracy in passing taxes in this august house. There is a reason as to why people are angry towards the political class that they think is inconsiderate to their sweat, to their desires, and being the roadblock towards their quest for success in business. Right, Honorable Speaker? The reasons for their closure this time are very clear. One, the introduction of the electronic physical receipting and invoicing solution without proper awareness and technical advice, what you've been hearing called IFRIS. This, in return, states that each wholesaler downtown must purchase a point-of-sale machine and must have the technical ability to operate it mount it and connect it to the portal, and for every transaction they conduct, there must be a loop between them and the Uganda Revenue Authority. We are not saying no. We are talking about the canon of plowing taxes and taxation, which is satanity. When I set up a business, I must be certain of the taxes that I'm going to encounter, that is one, but also the proper system of plowing them from society. Now, these people do not have the technical ability, that is number one. Two, they have not been educated on the use of the IFRIS. But also, it is uncertain that when it comes at such a time when they need to invest, they are running on loans, it is choking to them. Secondly, right honorable speaker, the traders are saying, when I go to import goods from abroad, I must be certain of the taxes that have been captured in the tax codes here by parliament. But someone goes and procures goods, when they arrive, they are given a value. They pay a certain value. After payment of a certain value, there is a second evaluation. And they tell them, you have to pay for a top-up. This issue of top-up is creating confusion. Then even after paying for a top-up... Is the top-up outside what was approved by this house? Yes, absolutely. It is at the discretion of a customs no. officer. There is information from a chair. Uh, can, I, can I first finish? No, fa let's get oh, the okay. information. All right, I'll take it. Uh, thank you, 
My honorable colleague for giving well, thank you, right honorable speaker. I think the matter that my colleague is talking about holds water. But we need to avoid cutting across issues that are administrative. We know for a fact that our own taxpayers sometimes do under-declare value. So it is not right for us to make a sweeping statement that they ask for top-up. Top-up is a result of finding out that there was an undeclaration of value. So if that can be justified, honorable members, that there is an undeclaration of value at the declaration. No, 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 wait. Honorable, right, honorable speaker. Right, honorable speaker. The point I'm trying to drive is that it is not right for us to make a sweeping statement that there is a top-up. If a top-up is not justifiable, that is right. But if the top-up is justifiable, there's no problem, and it's not outside the law. That's thank the information you, Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, I know you're still continuing. But when you say the house is inconsiderate in legislation, the reason I have emphasized the need for public hearing, that is why I have said we must have public hearing to ensure that the legislation reflects what is required, what is outside there. The infamous is not a tax. It is a system of tax collection. It is a tax collection and tax administration. We do not do, ta do tax administration here. We pass a tax and administration is the role of executive. So you need to be specific that much as we pass the taxes, that the persons who are responsible for administration should also do it in a way that is considerate to the people outside there. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker. There is a procedural matter. Thank you so much, Madam procedural Speaker. Procedural matter. Madam Speaker, Rule 80 is very clear. We should not debate in anticipation. You, you designated next week to deal with tax bills. Why would we open the debate? Uh, Yet you have designated next week for tax bills. Thank procedure. you so much, Madam Speaker. Honorable, honorable members, we are not debating on the tax which we have not passed. The concerns of Honorable Onsereko is the demonstration that is in downtown. It is a demonstration which is in downtown. And, and, and for me, my only... If you want to talk, I'll give you a microphone. But if you feel you should continue, we are here to solve people's problems. But if you all want to make noise here. Yes, uh, Felix. Uh, Madam Speaker, the matter being raised by Honorable Nisereko is very... Uh, Honorable Nisereko is on procedure. You're still coming back. And uh, he's raising that issue on behalf of the traders not only in Kampala, but all over the country. Uh, I, would, I would advise him to come in a proper way by a matter of presenting a petition from the traders. And when this petition is presented, it is referred to the appropriate committee, and that's when we will have a public hearing. We'll be invite all the stakeholders. That is finance and trade. Trade. So I would advise him to come with a proper petition signed by the petitioners, the traders, and the matter be referred to the committee. And that is where we are going to interrogate the matter by inviting all the stakeholders. I think that would be the proper matter, uh, way of debating this, this, uh, uh, this uh, is concern. Thank because you. We, we cannot debate it on o the floor. Honorable power. members, I, and I want to tell you, it is not only, not, it's not only happening in Kampala. Yeah. It is everywhere. And what Honorable Onsereko is raising is very, very important. Very important. That should not only stop here. This must be interrogated, and we must come to a solution to this. 
the committee of trade and committee of finance must do a public hearing with these traders can you conclude uh, right honorable speaker i would like to allay the fears of some of my colleagues like the chairperson of the finance committee when i talk about i talked about the saturnity in administration this is the tempo of presentation of people's issues so there is no reason as to why you say we cannot discuss an issue of enforcement. We can. I I'm trying to tell you of how to plow taxes. The reason is that at enforcement is where you get uncertainty. And that's why, rightly, so the right honorable speaker was talking about and that's why triple, I was telling, double, and whatever taxation. And that's why I was telling you that you are insincere when you say we are inconsiderate because we do not do tax administration our ours is to urge you are a to do what is right 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 honorable speaker I, i'll take your guidance but uh, besides the point let me make but, this but clear. let me tell you let's not take a lot of time on that it's a serious matter thank you very you much a must come out a, a committee of finance take it up and, and, and a trade and ensure that this they, there should be a certainty in the collection of these taxes. Right, right Honorable Speaker, as I wind up my matter, you're talking about over 200,000 people closing business. And that means for every day they close business is a shortfall in tax collection. And if we sit here and we just wish it away and i'm not saying we are wishing it was a house when we come out to debate their plight like you've guided so i would request that you give me time to complete the three issues then those three issues can be captured and be referred to the relevant uh, committees or within the wisdom of the house uh, they get their own referrals you've talked about double taxation and an uncertain Thank you, Honorable Colleague, for giving way. Uh, additionally, Right Honorable Speaker, currently as we speak, there is a lot of deployment, military and security deployment, in the business centers around Chikubo, Nasa, Nakasero, and it is terrorizing the customers and is scaring away the customers. So the business community... Where, where, where? Oh, is evidence? At least I've seen shops closed. Yeah, the shops are closed. But, but where is the evidence of military deployment? E e <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker, it's everywhere. Even on my phone, I can show you. <laughs> right. So, so, right, Honorable Speaker, we pray I, that I want, I want, I want. We need to clarify that. Yes. We have the army officers here. Can I hear from? Uh, what are they going to do? Can right, speaker, they can't defend their... Because no. <laughs> they know they are, they are there. The military is down there. Maybe it is for safety. Your ship, safety. Right, honorable speaker, it is terrorizing and scaring away the customers. And this is a very important issue that the business community has complained. Honorable members, honorable members, first of all, there's one person I want to thank for being in this house. I gave him marching orders when we were waiting him that you must be in the house every day. And I want to thank him so, so much. Honorable Balam, thank you for, for, for being in the house. That was one of the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Medi, can you finish? Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, as we wind up, There's just a, a second, as we wind up, and I'll take the, please, as we wind up, Right, Honorable Speaker, the matters are three. One, if the use, the usage of that uh, digital and e-receipt without offering technical assistance is a deterrent to further, uh, I mean, it's a discouragement to the traders to 
further invest in their businesses and definitely it will have a backlash. Secondly, the uncertain taxation that is there and the high-handed methods of plowing this tax. I was talking about the top-up and after the top-up, when the traders present their goods in the shops, they are stopped again and asked to pay another tax in form of another top-up. And we have to talk about that. Then finally is uh, the uh, issue of uh, the landlords. You're uh, saying uncertain taxation. Yes. What does un uncertain, uncertain taxation? Uncertain taxes, right honorable speaker, is this. When I give you the invoice, for example, okay, for example, if I give you my bill of lading, it will show the values of what I've imported. So these values are already captured in the tax in the taxes that we've passed. Give me a tax once and for all. If you give me a tax, then you will go ahead if you want. There, there is either double taxation, uh, uh, not uncertain taxation. No, no, I'm talking about the canons of taxation. Mm. One, there is uncertainty. Two, two, I'm telling you what the reality yes, is. Yes. And any other person who wants to debate the matter can also come and debate it. You, you so, finish. when I'm certain of the tax I'm going to pay, for example, if I imported a car, I'll give you an example. Let, it, let's first hear from an accountant. Let's first hear from an accountant. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, 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 I no, think I'll no, wind up my discussion us. here. It will help us. It will help us in that point. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. And thank you, Honorable Sereko, for giving way. Uganda Revenue Authority is mandated to administer taxes. But in that process, they conduct research and also link up with the suppliers. And sometimes they come up with the discoveries that traders have not brought the actual invoices, but provided forged invoices. Now, in a liaison with the suppliers, when they confirm that there is such an incident, then they have no option but to ad, uh, actually adjust the prices or the costs. Where that is the under has. declaration? Yes, when. So it's actually not an uncertain tax, but it is tax based on facts and based on research. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the level of the level of uh, you, you know. Honorable members, what we are doing is getting information to form what we are going to discuss. R right, Honorable Speaker, it is very absurd. And what I'm talking about, if given chance in the future, I would like to bring real evidence to dispute his facts. And the reason is very clear. Companies in some parts of the world issue e-receipts. For example, if I've bought a car at $10,000 from a given seller, where the, and, I, and the receipt has been issued to me, where does URA get the mandate to dispute my figure? No, I'm giving you reality. Two, if I go to, if I'm a trader, maybe, for example, I'm importing garments, I have negotiated with a manufacturer. They have given me a certain price. And I come here, or for example, the prices have dropped from the point of the manufacturer. But you appear before you are a, a huh? and you are a, a says, for us huh? the price we know is the price in January what? 2021. Honorable, I'm telling honorable, you the reality. Right, Honorable Speaker, honorable we may members. shy away from this. Honorable there members. will reach a moment when there is no one to speak for these people. Cut. And they will come like the sweepers and speak for themselves. Honorable members, can I hear from Katesh? Can I hear from Katesh? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a businessman. He will tell you that. Bala, let me first. <laughs> right, honorable speaker. right, honorable speaker. Honorable members. Right, honorable speaker. Tax is a matter of law. We should be distinguishing from tax 
and administration. There is no uncertainty as far as tax rates are concerned. Because this house passes the rates and the laws that they are using and the guidelines, some of them are international, like if we talk about the Brussels definition of value, the general agreement on tariffs and trade that gives rise to the harmonized code, all these ones are international. So the debate should, the issue should be not that Parliament is inconsiderate, but we are actually pass the laws in this house. Now, the issue of administration, I think, is where the member is raising concerns. And, uh, right honorable speaker, you have guided. We need to listen to all the parties and not to debate with a lot of emotions and, and, uh, and the information that might be misleading. If it is an issue of valuation, it is provided for under the GATT and the harmonized code. If people are applying it wrongly, then we can listen and understand, and then we can be able to guide our administrators to say, look, here you are overtaxing people, you are overvaluing goods. But you should not uh, debate without information. So I would like to uh, concur with you, right, Honorable Speaker, that you follow your guidance and allow, allow us to listen to the people and also listen to the administrators so that we can be able to guide I submit. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lop has something to say. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Right, Honorable Speaker, in your communication, you have emphasized that uh, as the committee is processing the tax bills, adequate time needs to be allocated to all the stakeholders. And, and that's important. Right, Honorable Speaker, this morning, I received the delegation of yeah, traders. Just a minute as we give them adequate time. We also have statutory deadlines. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Certainly, we must work within um, what the law does say as we avail ample time to the stakeholders to share their concerns. As I was saying, Right Honorable Speaker, this morning I got a delegation. I received a delegation of traders under their umbrella organization, CASITA, Kampala City Traders Association, headed by their chairperson. One of the concerns that they did raise with us was uh, that in the past they have not had chance to have an input when new taxes are proposed. So they are looking forward to an interaction so that they can share their thoughts and not just to grumble after taxes have been passed and then they are struggling with them. So. They are looking forward to that. Two, um, right honorable speaker, the other concern they raised was to do with IFRIS, which we are talking about. That's the electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solutions. The traders are saying they are happy to pay taxes, but there is a challenge with this system. URA okay. has on, not... On, honorable Lord. I don't agree when they say that in the past they've not had a chance. The, uh, the, the adverts are run by the office of the clerk in the newspapers, in the TVs, everywhere, inviting them to come and give their contribution towards the taxes. Uh, I actually agree. There's no need for the information. I agree with you, right, Honorable Speaker. It's okay. There's no need for the information. Honorable Speaker, I, I'm actually agreeing with you that uh, we just need to avail ample time, as you did mention in your communication. So uh, th there's no need for back and forth uh, pulling, uh, Honorable Minister. We are all in agreement. Yes. Let's avail time to them. But as I was finishing this issue of uh, IFRIS, they are saying URA has not taken off adequate time to sensitize them for them to come on board. There are many challenges. One, they need to have smartphones which a couple of them don't have, internet and so on, to be able to interact with this system. And so they, they are saying they are having run-ins with URA because they are not on the same page yet. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, one of the cardinal principles in taxation is that you have got to make it easy for people to pay taxes. It's got to be easy and clear. Because once it is not easy, then people are going to evade the taxes because they are saying, I am giving my money, but number two, I am struggling 
with your system. So the comfortable, convenient thing for them to do is to evade taxes, and yet we don't want that to happen. So we'd like to implore URA. Take off time and interact with these traders. They're saying they need to engage with you, have a good understanding, get to share their concerns with you, because they're grappling with many challenges that they have shared with us, but URA meets them once in a long time. And they're saying, please make time. Honorable Minister of Finance, please encourage URA, which you do supervise. These traders are saying, we are here. They have no objection to paying taxes because they want to benefit from service delivery as well. But they are saying, engage them, listen to their challenges because they are struggling. And no wonder they are now closing their shops. No wonder they are protesting because they are saying, we are not being listened to. Can we give them a platform to be listened to? Uh, Honorable Law, yes, maybe just for your information, uh, there is going to be a meeting between URA, the traders, and His Excellency to resolve those issues. They want, they need to be listened to. Our interest is to have money collected, not to be evaded. So once that meeting takes place, then I believe everything will be resolved. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Um, I'm glad that government is listening to that clarion call because we should not wait for traders to protest and close shops and I don't know what else gets to happen before we can get to engage them. You know, let's not put the what, cart what before the, the horse. Uh, uh, Katesh, competition bill. Right, right Honourable Speaker, I think the issues are very many and, uh, and uh, there are issues around how we are managing the import substitution policy. There are issues around the competition. We passed a competition bid here. That if you are a manufacturer, do you go down to have your own retail shop and you become a distributor and you age out other people in the business? So, Madam Speaker, I think the best thing is to look at these issues jointly with the trade committee and finance to look at the environment if we are saying that uh, the reasons why some of the taxes are high is protect the local industries have the local industries developed the capacity to be able to sufficiently provide the demand so that or we need to create a balance so i think we need to look at all these issues and be able to examine and come out with serious policy uh, guidance to be able to avoid otherwise having a strike in sit in the city is not is not good because it leads to revenue uh, loss every day that there is a strike so it's not desirable so the best thing is how do we quickly work and listen to them and also work with government to uh, to avoid a situation like this from happening again finance thank you Right Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, it is true we have experienced a challenge with the traders in Chikubo, and yesterday they staged the strike. Today we have received reports that some have started opening their shops. Madam Speaker, I wish to inform Parliament that there are three issues under contention, but the main one concerning URA is IFLIS. There is an IFLIS issue, there is a taxation of textiles by weight which the traders are objecting, and also there is a concern that the chain of distribution some of the manufacturers distribute, have become wholesalers, have become retailers, the whole chain, hawkers, etc. Madam Speaker, while I listened to Honorable Sereko and uh, Honorable Leader of Opposition, they mentioned lack of sensitization. I wish to inform this House that ever since IFLIS was, was launched in 2019 
and subsequently we underwent full implementation after the COVID, URA has visited over 20,000 traders in the Kampara Central Business Districts with sensitization, with installation and everything. They also mentioned that, that the app or the phone is not available. Madam Speaker, we have got three options. You can have an IFLIS machine stored in your shop. You can have an app or you can even install the system on your computer in the shop. These are the three options we have provided. Madam Speaker, lastly, and this is my prayer with the House, that we must help, we must help URA and the government to raise the revenue by by clarification is the he has yielded he has yielded the floor I didn't force him thank you my uh, good friend honorable Musasi. the matters you've noted are worth talking about and we've been with you here previously as chairperson of the finance committee you remember about the taxation of uh, garments based on weight we had a long debate on that and there was resistance from the side of the executive and the repercussions are clearly seen even three years to four years down the road secondly you're talking about the administration using IFRIS I agree with you that's what we talked about the issue is does it attract no single fee Two, don't they need the technical assistance that they are talking about in order to be on page and who has to provide that and if you have those answers then come back with a comprehensive statement maybe this week because uh, uh, we will continue members. closing our shops honorable until members. we have a serious answer honorable members based on rule 87 based on rule 87 I had already made a ruling that the Committee of Finance, Trade, will meet with the stakeholders, with the traders, and report back to this house on Tuesday. Next item. Item three. Bills first reading. Designation. Oh. Designation of members to committees. Honorable members, we had members that needed to be designated the new members, and then we had redesignations. Can we have that done? Um, right, Honorable Speaker, I would wish to start with the sectoral committee. Pass one to Rule 1510C and Rule 187 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament. I beg to propose to designate the following honorable members to the following sectoral committees. Honorable Dr. Chitutu Mary Goretti to the Committee on Public Service and Local Government. Honorable Ochoa David to the Committee on Gender, Labor, and Social Development. I beg to propose. Opposition. Madam Speaker, I will commence by receiving our new member, the newly sworn in Woman Member of Parliament of Dokolo. I want to receive her with open hands and I hereby designate her to the. Who is the new member? Akuti, the Honorable Akuti Sara. Honorable Akuti, absent but in absentia, she's welcome. 
and congratulations. I know she's around, she'll be here anytime from now. And in accordance to our rules of procedure, Madam Speaker, I hereby designate her to the following committee on education and sports. That is a sectoral committee. Thank you. I beg to designate. Thank you. The next committee is a standing committee. And I beg to designate her on the committee on HIV, AIDS, and related matters. I Thank beg to designate Madam Speaker. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I have another category of the shadow cabinet that I would like to realign on their relevant sector committees, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Asanas Nyakato, who is the Shadow Minister of Agriculture, is hereby designated to the relevant committee of Agriculture. The Honorable... I, I hope they are having two committees. Uh, of course, no. Of course, already they are on the standing committees. But we would like they, to realign they them to uh, the sectoral committees. Remove them from the other committees. Of course, of course. Okay. By, okay. Uh, by virtue of this uh, designation, they are hereby shifted from wherever they have been to the new committees. The honourable. Protect me from honourable. All the shadow committees. Uh, um, oh. Shadow, the shadow cabinet, uh, the shadow cabinet are attached to their committees oh, yes. where there are shadows. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Internal affairs, the Honorable Betty Bakireke Namboze of Mukono Municipality uh, is hereby designated to the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs. Then the shadow minister in charge of East African Affairs. The Honorable Luz Akero is hereby designated to that relevant committee of East African Affairs. The Honorable Seungu Joseph Konzaga is hereby designated to the relevant committee of education and sports. Together with the Honorable Geoffrey Kayemba Solo, who is uh, the minister uh, Shadow Minister in charge of sports. The Honorable Semuju Ibrahim Inganda is hereby designated to the Committee on Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The Honorable Helen Nachimuli of Kalangala District is hereby designated to the ICT and the National Guidance. The following, I designate them to the Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. The Honorable Jonathan Odur, who is the Shadow Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. The Honorable Shamim Malende, Minister of Human, in Charge of Human Rights. The Honorable Winifred Nwagaba, Attorney General. Shadow Attorney General, the Honorable Master Zimpuga of Nyendo Mukungwe to this same committee on legal and parliamentary affairs. I beg to designate. The Thank committee you. on fiscal infrastructure. The Honorable Rutamaguzi Semagula of Nakaseke is the minister in charge of lands planning and uh, urban development. The Shadow Minister. The next one is the Honorable Francis Mwechuche of Wuhweju. Uh, is Wuhweju. Yeah. Is he hereby designated to the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure? The uh, Committee on Presidential Affairs are uh, hereby designated the Honorable Valimueso Ronald in Subuga of Nakawa East, the Honorable Zake Francis 
who is Shadow Minister of Presidents and Security, and the Honorable Okini P.P. Ojara. The Honorable Okini P.P. Ojara of Chua West is our Shadow Minister of Science, Innovation and Technology. I hereby designate the following on the Committee on Public Service and the Local Government. The Honorable Adeke Anna Ebachu of Soroti District and the Honorable Okot Santa of Waru. She is our Shadow Minister in charge of Special Regions. On the Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry, I designate the following, Madam Speaker. The Honorable Joan Alobo Okom, who is our Shadow Minister of Microfinance and Cooperatives. The Honorable Manjel Chebakutika, who is a woman member of Ginger City. The Honorable Karimu Masawa, the Industrial Division in Bali City, Member of Parliament is our Minister in Charge of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, Gender, Labor and Social Development, Madam Speaker, I designate the following. The Honorable Hirari Chiaga, Innocent, uh, who is our Shadow Minister of Arts and Culture, the Honorable Rose Fortunate Nantongo of Chotra, who is our gender minister. Finally, environment, natural resources. I designate the following, Madam Speaker. Our shadow minister of water and environment, the Honorable Kaya Christine Nachmuero of Chiboga, and the Honorable Ronald Ivanis Kanike of Bukoto is our shadow minister of energy and the mineral development. Oh, finally, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs is uh, I hereby designate the Honorable Muadanku Nyinji of Chad on the East. And uh, the last one, Madam Speaker, I'm designating the Honorable Batua, Dr. Batua Timothy Luswala of Ginger East. Uh, on the Committee of Health. He is uh, our Minister, Shadow Minister of Health, Madam Speaker. Lastly, Madam Speaker, is uh, a category for redesignation pertaining to the correspondence that I received. I have already designated the Honorable Akelo Lucy. She is our Minister in charge of foreign affairs. I don't know where you are. Madam Speaker, what about Samuel? Redesignation of the following members. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, in accordance with our rules of procedure, Rule 160, Sub Rule 2. I hereby redesignate the following uh, members from the committees they were on after the administrative review, Madam Speaker, under the guidance I received, courtesy of your correspondence. The Honorable Nsamba Patrick Oshabe of Cassandra North from Budget to Public Accounts Committee Central. The Honorable Bet Nambo Zebachireke, Mukono Municipality, from Government Assurances to Kosase. The Honorable Sewanyan Alan A. Eh, Makindi West, from Budget to Kosase. The Honorable Nku Nyinji Muada of Chad on the East, from Budget to Kosase. The Honorable Kanyike Ronald Evans, from budget to Kosase. The Honorable Sasaka Isaiah Zijoni of Dadri East, from budget to Kosase. 
uh, uh, to public accounts central. Oh yes, I've received a clarification. He opted for Kosase, Madam Speaker. So I let me repeat. The Honorable Sasaga Isaiah Johnny of Dadri East from budget to Kosase. The Honorable Okini Pipi Ojara of Chua West County from Appointments Committee to Public Accounts Committee Local Government. The Honorable Sebamala Richard. Uh, uh, appointments Committee, somebody in Appointments Committee can be in another two other committees. Uh, but, uh, Madam Speaker, if the member opted out, uh, I wouldn't uh, have resisted. No, if you are doing it in the principle of two committees. Oh, I tried to okay. prevail over that, but he resisted, he insisted, actually, and I could not resist the insistence from the member. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Sebamala Richard of Bukoto Central, from Budget Committee to Public Accounts Central, the Honorable Okot Santa Aru North. She had been skipped. There was an omission. But she's a member on Appointments Committee, Madam Speaker. It was only pending your announcement. And lastly, the Honorable Nyeko. The Honorable Nyeko Derek of Maki India East. Is from National Economy to Human Rights Committee. Uh, actually, the last, the very last one is the Honorable Kabuye Frank, who is, of course, Shadow Minister, charge of youth and children, uh, to the Committee on Gender, Madam Speaker, Gender, Labor, and Social Development. I beg thank to you, designate. Thank you. Independence. Thank you. I don't. Thank you. Pursuant to Rule 160, Sub Rule 4. Right Honorable Speaker, on your behalf, allow me to redesignate the Honorable Muhammad Insereko, <laughs> <laughs> Member of Parliament for Kampala Central, from the Committee of National Economy to the Committee of Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises. I beg to submit. <laughs> Any other independent? <laughs> Can you designate all the whole list I gave you? I, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the trust you have in me furthermore. <laughs> Pursuant to Rule uh, 160, Sub Rule 4, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, on your own behalf, I designate the Honorable Twesige Nathan Itungo from the Committee of HIV and AIDS to the Committee of Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises. Number two, the Honorable Ndiomujeni Roland from the Committee of National Economy to the Committee on PAC, of PAC Central. The Honorable Shatz Mosherure Naevare Kutesa from a Committee of PAC Local Government to the Committee on Climate Change. The Honorable Musila John from the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Discipline to the Committee of PAC Local Government. The Honorable Akungizibwe Roland from the Committee of Kosase to the Committee of Science, Technology and Innovation. The Honorable Adidwa Abdu from the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Discipline to the Committee of Science and Technology. The Honorable Mboizi Arthur Wako from the Committee of Climate Change to the Committee of Science, Technology and Innovation. The Honorable Amede Agnes from the Committee of Government Assurances and Implementation to the Committee of Science, Technology and Innovation. The Honorable Waliomu Mwanika Moses from the Committee of Equal Opportunities 
to the Committee of Science, Technology, and Innovation. I beg to designate. Thank you. Ame. Government Chief Whip. I had partly designated, he had it designated all. Um, right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, in conformity with the provisions of Rule 1510C and Rule 158 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I beg to propose the designation of the following members to the following standing committees. Honorable Dr. Chitutu Mary Goretti to the Committee on National Economy. Honorable Ochoa David to the Committee on Public Accounts, Local Government. Honorable Paul Quizera to the Committee on HIV AIDS and Related Matters. Honorable Lake Kujuel to the Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation. Honorable Loy Katali to the Committee on Public Accounts, Central. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to propose. We had, we had forgotten to designate the uh, Honorable Agnes Nanduto. Pass, pass you on to Rule 164, 160 sub Rule 4. On behalf of the Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to designate the Honorable Agnes Nanduto on, to the Committee of National Economy as the Standing Committee and the Sectoral Committee to the Committee of Gender of gender. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am assuming that there is nothing from the army. I now put a question that the members I put a question that the members that have been designated in various co committees as proposed Committees as from post, those in favor say on the contrary. Aye. The eyes have it. Honorable Choi, you are welcome back to the house and thank you for making it back to the house. I want to thank God for that. The next item Bills first reading. Bills first reading. Uh, oh, yeah. 131, the Uganda I National. I'm going to tell you to stand up. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in February, I raised an issue here concerning uh, town roads in Rukunjiri and regarding to the construction of Rukunjiri Kanungu Road. Doctor, the presiding officer directed. Doctor. Right. You will bring that when we are discussing on MPS of infrastructure. Thank mm. you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Bill's first reading. Honourable Honor <coughs> members, you will recall that on 27th February 2024, the executive withdrew the bills that it is sold to rationalize and merge public entities pending harmonization as per the concerns of the members. Last week, some bills were reintroduced, and today, another lot of bills is being reintroduced for the first reading. Therefore, Pursuant to Rule 128.1 of the Rules of Procedure, I will invite the various ministers to lay the bills on table. And remember, when the bills were presented in the House, 
they went to different committees and I am aware that these committees have looked at these bills. Now what was lacking was making sure that these, committee, these bills were not in omnibus, were to be brought one by one plus their certificate of financial implication which is being laid now. So, pursuant to that rule, the sectoral committees are supposed to embark on that and report back on these bills. We already have bills which are ready to that effect. The Uganda National Commission for UNESCO Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and my dear colleague, colleagues, I want to move that the bill entitled Uganda, the Uganda National Commission for UNESCO Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. Thank you. Uh, right, this is it. Right on, right. We have a certificate of financial implication. I have a certificate of financial implications and I beg to lay. Thank you. Pursuant to rule 129, refer to the sector committee of education and sports. The Uganda Road Fund Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Minister of, um, of Works, pursuant to Rule 1291. Honorable must. Members, what is the problem? We need it. It Even if you want it to stay, let it be laid on the table. Yes. Right when I was speaker and honorable colleagues, I beg to move that the there bill. There is somebody entitled. saying a stranger in the house. That is honorable Fred. Right when I was speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Uganda Road Fund Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I also lay on table the certificate of financial implication in compliance with the public of, of finance and the management act, I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Infrastructure. Honorable Fred, first come back. Has our one billion gone to the constituencies? Honorable members, we passed we passed a budget in this house. We passed a budget in this house, and that money has helped the districts. Each district was to get one billion shillings, the cities and whichever. Can we find out from Wax whether that money has gone to the constituencies? Uh, right on our speaker. Much as you want to, to, to make amendments or whichever, but you want our uh, one billion. Can we have the one billion supposed to be in the districts for working of the roads? Uh, thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. I would request, since the Minister of Finance here and uh, is responsible for disbursing that money, would be in the right position to give us the best assurance on the one billion. Honorable, honorable, honorable Minister of Works, much as finance is here, it is Works that is supposed to ask for the money. Okay, let Honorable Speaker, as stakeholders in this matter, we have been engaging the Minister of Finance, and as I speak now, the 500 million has so far reached the districts. Order.
Honorable members. Honorable members. Honorable. Honorable members. Honorable members. Can I have silence? The young minister is very correct. I don't know why you're making noise. Oma, honorable minister, sit. You sit. Finance. Madam Speaker, as I informed this house last Thursday, I wish to state again as follows. We approved the budget of extra one billion in financial year 2023-2024 to facilitate road maintenance in all districts of Uganda. Districts and municipalities and cities. Madam Speaker, the arrangement was that every quarter we release 250 million. We did directly to the districts. We managed to achieve this in quarter one and quarter two. Quarter three, because of the cash flow challenges, we were not able to send the 250 million. Madam Speaker, we are doing everything possible to ensure that in this last quarter four, we send all the balance of 500 million. I thank you. Honorable, Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, when you're sending the 500, kindly give me evidence. Then I'll lay on the table. Give me evidence of the 500 that is going to the district when you are sending. Much obliged, right honourable speaker. On honourable, honourable members. Honourable members, you know my ro my my principles. I don't like making noise. When I ask for evidence, I am speaking for you. I want evidence that the money has been sent to districts, not to Bukedea, to all the districts. Uh -uh. I know when a release is being made. Leave it to me. I'm going to make a follow-up with the finance. Next. Bill's first reading. The Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center Act Repeal Bill 2024. Minister of uh, Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Sereko, the door is just very near you. Right Honorable Speaker and uh, and the uh, honorable members, I beg to move that the Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education, As Education Center Act Repeal Bill 2024 be read for the first time. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Trade. And Tradism. with it is a certificate, uh, accompanying certificate of financial implication. Thank you. And honorable minister, when you're putting that money, don't put it on the last week so that you sweep it back. Next, next. The Persons with Disabilities Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Minister of Gender, just lay it from there. Your friend Kaveruka is around. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. In accordance with Rule 128 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to move that the bill entitled Person Disabilities Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. And right honorable speaker, we have also attached the certificate of financial implication. I beg to lay. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Thank you so much. Refer to the Committee of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. Solomon, can you pick? Honorable Solomon, pick. Next. The National Youth Council Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Balam, Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development in charge of children, youth. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Switch on. Right, Honorable Speaker. In accordance with the Rule 128 of the Rule uh, rule of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to move uh, that bill, entitled National Youth Council Amendment Bill 2024, be read for the first time. I beg today. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Section 76 of the Public Finance Management Act 2025, as amended, and Rule 118 of Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to lay on table the Certificate of Financial Implication for the National Youth Council Amendment Bill 2024. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. And refer to the Committee of Gender, Labor and Social Development. The National Planning Authority Amendment Bill 2024. Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Madam Speaker, in accordance with Rule 128.1, I beg to move that the bill entitled the National Planning Authority Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The Physical Planning Amendment Bill 2024. Please lay. With Together the with the bill is the certificate of financial implications which I wish to lay on. Please table. lay. The physical planning amendment bill 2024. Honorable Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Physical Planning Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I Thank beg to move. Thank you. In furtherance to Rule 1291, which is accordingly referred to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The Tire 4 Microfinance Institutions and Money Lenders Amendment Bill 2024. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Tire 4 Microfinance Institutions and Money Lenders Amendment Bill be read for the first time. I beg to move. Referred to Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development as per Rule 1291. The Uganda National Meteorological Authority Amendment Bill 2024. Minister of Water.
Madam Speaker and uh, Honorable Colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the National Forestry and Pre-Planting Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Thank you. In furtherance to Rule 1291, refer to... Honorable Minister, we are on a metrological, not tree planting. Sorry, Madam Speaker. No, uh, my, na my neighbor uh, was. Honorable uh, Minister, don't you see that's why you needed to leave these bills alone, alone? <laughs> these institutions. My, my neighbor was, uh, was uh, keeping me too engaged. I'm sorry. It's okay. Madam Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker and, uh, and Honorable Members, I beg to move that the bill entitled Uganda National Meteorological Authority Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I also Thank attach, you. Madam Speaker, the Certificate of Financial Implications. I thank, thank you. Thank you. Pass one to roll 1291. The bill stands referred to a Committee of Natural Resources. The National... Of the National Forest Environment and Natural Resources. The National Forestry and Tree Planting Amendment Bill 2024. Madam Speaker, Honourable, and Honourable colleagues, the National Forestry and Tree Planting Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. And uh, I'm also laying the Certificate of Financial Implications for the same. Thank you. Refer to Committee Should of Environment and Natural Resources, Pass one to Rule 1291 of the Rules of Procedure. Honorable members, in the public gallery this afternoon, we have students from Makere University under the umbrella of Bagwere Students Association. Echida Chonka, you are most welcome. They are represented by Honorable Amede. You are most welcome. That's your member of parliament. Honorable Kinovere, Honorable Stephen, Arthur, Honorable Vyakatonda. Uh, you are most welcome. Pamela Kabugo. You're most welcome. When you go, you tell people not to dig for Ichidachonka only. Thank you. The Assets of Departed Asians Amendment Bill 2024. Uh, Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the that the bill entitled The Assets of Departed Asians Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. Thank I you. Beg to move. Thank you, certificate. Madam Speaker, the certificate is hereby attached and I lay. Thank you. Pass one to one 12901. I refer to the Committee of Finance and Planning and Economic Development. The Public Enterprises Reform and Divestiture Act Amendment Bill 2024. Finance. Madam Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled The Public Enterprises Reform and Divestiture Act. Madam Speaker, I beg to repeat. I beg to move that the bill entitled the Public Enterprises Reform and Divestiture Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. And it is accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implications. Thank you. 
refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, pursuant to Rule 1291 <coughs> of the Rules of Procedure. The National Population Council Act Repeal Bill 2024. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the National Population Council Act 2024 Repeal Bill. No. The National Population Council Act 2014 Repeal Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Thank you. It is accompanied by the certificate of financial implications. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The Registration of Persons Amendment Bill 2024. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Registration of Persons Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time, and it is accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implications. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of uh, Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Can you retable the one of registration of persons amendments bill? Right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the registration of persons amendment bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Thank you. Pursuant to Rule 1291 of the Rules of Procedure, it's referred to the Committee of Int Defense and Internal Affairs. The, Na the Uganda National Roads Authority mm -hmm. Act Repeal Bill 2024. Mm -hmm. You give the senior minister also to lay. Give the senior minister. Right Honourable Speaker and Members, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Uganda National Roads Authority Act Repeal Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I also lay on table the, the Certificate of Financial Implication in compliance with the Public Finance Management Act. Thank you. Uh, stands referred to a committee of fiscal planning. Honorable Minister, why I wanted you to lay that uh, report is because of uh, when you look at uh, uh, Kampala Ginger Road. <laughs> the Kampala Ginger Road. Leave alone the bypass. It is not a road. A I am happy that you know that it is not a road. And you will need an explanation to that effect. We need you to bring a report on what you plan to work to do on that road. Next, the National Library Amendment Bill 2024. Minister of Gender. Mm. 
Gender. I, I don't know, right, honorable speaker. The national library, library is supposed to go to education, and I thought they would be the ones moving. But if they have not moved, I can move it on behalf of the executive. On but behalf of education. Uh, of the executive, because it's supposed to go to education. They're the ones who are moving it. It is, okay. it is leaving us and going to education. It's right, honorable but speaker. You know, it is leaving you and going to education. So, you lay it, and then it goes to the, to the respective one. Okay, thank you for that guidance. Right, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled the National Library Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time, and attached is also the certificate of financial implication. I beg to lay. Thank you. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Gender and Education. You will have a joint committee for this because it is leaving you and going to another sector. Next. The National Council for Older Persons Amendment Bill 2024. Gender. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Sanon for this time replacing but, uh, right now speaker i beg to move that the bill entitled the national council for older persons amendment bill 2024 be read for the first time and right now speaker we have also attached a certificate of financial implication i beg to lay thank you thank you refer to the committee of gender labor and uh, social development the National Women's Council Amendment Bill 2024. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to form a delay. Thank you. Thank you. Then. Thank you so much. Right now, Speaker, I beg to move that the National Women's Council Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time and attached is also the certificate for financial implication. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I refer to the Committee of Gender, Labor and Community Development. That's one to rule one to nine one. The, Ug the Uganda Wildlife Amendment Bill 2024. Right Honorable Speaker, as instructed, I beg to lay. Thank you. Thank you for being a good courier. The Uganda oh. Wildlife Amendment Bill 2024. Minister of Tr Tourism. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable me Members, I beg to move that the Uganda Wildlife Act Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time, and with it is uh, an accompanying certificate of financial implications. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry. The National Curriculum Development Center Amendment Bill 2024. Education. Minister of Education. I saw Minister of Education here. The Minister of Education was uh, here. He walked uh, out. Honorable Bua, you will not lay it. Let him come back and lay. Next. The registration, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau Amendment Bill 2024. Minister of Constitutional Affairs. I've seen Doug. Doug.
Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I beg to lay a bill entitled the Uganda Registration Services Bureau Amendment Bill 2024 with a certificate of financial implication attached. Thank you so much, Person to Rule 129. One is referred to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. The Uganda Export Promotions Board Act Repeal Bill 2024. Minister of Trade. Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay Bill Uganda Export Promotions Board Act, the Appeal Bill 20, 2024, and with the financial implications. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Tourism, Trade, and Industry. The Uganda Trypanosomiasis Control. Council Act Repeal Bill 2024. Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. I've seen Honorable Doha. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to lay the bill entitled the Uganda Trapanosomiasis <laughs> Control Council Act 2024. I beg to lay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Doa, referred to the Committee of Agriculture. Uh, where is the certificate? The certificate. Right, Honorable Speaker. I, I, be, I beg to lay the certificate. This is, I beg to lay the certificate for financial implication. I beg thank to lay. Thank you, thank you. We refer to the Committee of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. Honorable members, Honorable Ministers, with the due respect, when you finish what is supposed to be done by you, you need to be around to help your colleagues, to support your colleagues. The, the MPs that you see seated around here are here to do your work. Because for us, ours ends here. You are the ones who bring the work. So you can't lay one bill and then you disappear. We need to get an explanation why Honorable Muingo left and did not lay everything. And remember, we have on the other paper the ministerial policy statements, which we need explanations from him. Right Honorable Speaker, I undertake to look for Honorable Senior Miingo and bring him back into the house. I've been calling him. He has not picked, but I will I'll look for him. 
Um, right Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that um, the bill entitled the National Curriculum Development Center Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time and the bill is accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implications in compliance with um, the Public Finance Management Act 2015 as amended. Thank you. I refer to the Committee of Education and Sports, pursuant to Rule 1291 of Rules of Procedure. Next. Item 5. Motion for resolution of Parliament to determine the post-retirement benefits of the Auditor General under Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act 2008. Honorable Members, Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act 2008 prescribes that the remunerations and the conditions of service of the Auditor General, including the post-retirement benefits, shall be determined by Parliament. It is against that premise that the Minister of Finance and Planning Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development will seek to move a motion to that effect. As you are aware, the current Auditor General has had an illustrious career spanning from 2001 to date. His tenure has witnessed a number of issues including the growth on internal external audit functions across government, it is only befitting that this parliament pronounces itself on the reward that must be, that must go with auditor generals. And we are not talking about the current auditor general, the auditor generals that will be in place, and that is by law that we must pronounce ourselves. We may not tell you all why we are doing this now, but we need to pass it. We need to pass it. I now invite the Minister of, uh, of Finance. And why the Minister of Finance is moving this motion? Because it has an effect on the consolidated fund. It has an effect because there is going to be money lost to that effect. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to move a motion for a resolution of Parliament of the Republic of Uganda to determine the post-retirement benefits of the Auditor General under Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act 2008. And this motion is moved in accordance with Rule 156 of our Rules of Procedure. Madam Speaker and colleagues, Whereas Article 163.1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda provides for an Auditor General appointed by the President with approval of Parliament and whose office shall be a public office. And whereas the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda enacted the National Audit Act 2008 to give effect to Article 163 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and also facilitate the Auditor General in, in independent execution of the mandate of the Office of the Auditor General. Aware that under Section 5.1 of the National Audit Act, the Auditor General may retire after attaining the age of 60 years and shall vacate office on attaining the age of 70 years Further aware that under Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act, 
the remuneration and other conditions of service of the Auditor General, including post-retirement benefits, shall be determined by Parliament. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Parliament that, number one, the Auditor General shall, on retirement from office, be granted the following benefits. One, a monthly retirement benefit equivalent to the salary payable to a sitting Auditor General. The retirement benefit shall be paid on the retired Auditor General for life. Two, a furnished house or a one of payment of 20,000 currency points payable in lieu of the house. Three, an annual medical allowance equivalent to the medical allowance payable to a sitting Auditor General. Four, a chauffeur driven car or a one of payment of 20,000 currency points payable in lieu of the car. Five, security provided by the state. Six, a fuel and vehicle repairs allowance of 100 currency points per month. And seven, an official burial by the state upon death. I beg to move right honorable speaker. Thank you so, so much. Is it seconded? Is a motion seconded? Yes. Seconded by Amos, by a call, by a joke, by by engineer, by Koluo, by former export promotion, <laughs> by Kazo, by Kadungu, by Hubbard, uh, Noah, uh, Jane. Wilson, Daka, Miss Honorable Seno, by Pasta, by Mbabazi Neloy, and Nakasongola. Thank you. By Helen, by Buire, Attorney General, General Kavma. General Kavma, by the way, congratulations for the for the promotion by the whole house. Honorable members, I'm seeing a mayor also there with the <laughs> honorable members. Okay. Uh, would you just fight your motion? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the Parliament of Uganda in 2008, in exercise of its legislative mandate, chose to breathe life in the provision of Article 163 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda by enacting an enabling law entitled the National Audit Act 2008. The National Audit Act is aimed at strengthening the office of the Auditor General in execution of its mandate by providing for the appointment, tenure, and removal of Auditor General, providing for the staff of the office of the Auditor General, providing for the auditing of accounts of central government, local government, councils, administrative units, public organizations, private organizations and bodies, empowering and giving the Auditor General rights of access to documents and information relevant to the performance of his or her functions and for other related matters. It is no secret that by the time of enactment of the National Audit Act, this country had lost a good, prof a good professional in the person of the current Auditor General who had left in 2005 for the United States because he did not agree with the terms of service of the office. After failing to get replacement, he was convinced to return to the office after enactment of the National Audit Act and restructuring of the office. Madam Speaker, 
and colleagues. However, in so doing, it, res it reserved the right of and authority in Section 5.2 to determine the remuneration and other conditions of service of the Auditor General, including post-retirement benefits. Fourteen years down the road, Parliament has not yet ex executed this statutory mandate. In Uganda today, many institutions are struggling to retain talented employees, and yet loyal employees are essential for long-term business success and stability. On this premise, when you find competent, talented employees, you want to do everything in your power to keep them. Retaining the most productive personnel is easier said than done, and yet attraction is very expensive for all organizations. This is why Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act was enacted. In supporting this motion, I have the following reasons. One, attracting and retaining talent. Offering competitive retirement benefits attract experienced professionals to the law and encourages them to stay for long enough to make meaningful contributions. Two, motivation and job satisfaction. Knowing that they will be taken care of financially after retirement can enhance job satisfaction and motivation, leading to better performance and dedication to their duties. Three, reducing turnover. Generous retirement benefits can reduce turnover rates, which is beneficial for continuity, institutional memory, and maintaining integrity and effectiveness of the audit process. Four, ensuring independence. Adequate retirement benefits can help ensure independence of the Auditor General by mitigating concerns about post-retirement financial stability and reducing the potential of undue influence from external parties. Five, public confidence. Providing good retirement benefits demonstrates a commitment to valuing the important work done by the Auditor General and can enhance public confidence in the integrity of the auditing process. Overall, right honorable speaker, investing in retirement benefits of the Auditor General is an investment in the effectiveness, integrity, and stability of the auditing function in government. It is on this basis that the above, that I support the motion for the resolution of Parliament of the Republic of Uganda stipulating the retirement benefits of the Auditor General of Uganda. Madam Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I beg to submit. Thank you so much, Minister. The seconder, Honorable Amos. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues. In my capacity as Chairperson of the Finance Committee, I would like to second the resolution of Parliament to move under Article 163, Clause 17 of the Constitution and Section 5, Clause 2 of the National Audit Act providing for determination of post-retirement benefits of the Auditor General. The right Honorable Speaker, following the Second Amendment of the Constitution as amended 20, I mean 2005, Act Number 11 of 2005, the independence benefits and allowances of the Auditor General were well defined in a number of the constitutional provisions under Article 163. Empowering Parliament to determine such benefits and allowances as deemed necessary for the performance of the functions of the Auditor General. In that vein, Right Honorable Speaker, the National Audit Act was enacted and gave effect to Article 154, subsection 3, and 163 of the Constitution, Section 5, Subsection 2, expressly provides 
for the remuneration and other conditions of service of the Auditor General, including post-retirement benefits to be determined by Parliament. However, the quantification of the post-retirement benefits are not specific in the Act. And alive to the above, the sitting Auditor General, having served diligently for over 20 years, right Honorable Speaker, is due for retirement in a short term. However, his post-retirement benefits have not been clearly de delineated in the law, much as Parliament has been empowered to do so. And by resolution or otherwise, this is more than 16 years overdue. And therefore, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, based on the above, I therefore second the motion by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for a resolution for the post-retirement benefits of the Auditor General to be clearly established and determined. I beg to move, right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable Nathan Nade. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to also say I support the motion, but I want to move some amendments at the end. First, I'm one of those who led the process to have the National Audit Act. Honorable members, whoever is going to stand, you either make the amendment only. We are doing what we are constitutionally supposed to do. That's true. So, Madam Speaker, uh, one, in most countries, including South Africa, an auditor general works for a minimum one term, five years. However, I want to congratulate John Mwanga, an auditor general, for having served for this entire time without having a crisis. Because most of the auditor generals in most countries have been held for corruption, for theft, because they audit the national budget. The entire money is in their hands. And they are treated even more than the chief justice of any country in remuneration. Madam Speaker, the amendment I want to move. One, we have not heard about a handshake because the auto general has worked, is going. I have not heard about what are we paying him as is going. You mentioned how much do you so, want us to pay him so, as a handshake. Yeah, Madam Speaker, I want to make a, on that one that I'm going to make an amendment on the handshake, but also two, supposing you employed an auto general who stays, who doesn't reach the 60 years, how do you pay him? Because I can come and work for only one week because I'm an auto general, I come and I benefit from the law. We should also put a minimum of how many years you must work before you qualify for that benefit. Number three, Mrs. Madam Speaker. Let, let's move systematically. I'm, I'm going to come, Madam. I want to put the cases, then I come one by one. Madam Speaker, there are also cases if an auto general has worked, supposing of ill health and lives, what do we do? In most cases now, like somebody, you know, in our Bible, the moment you are 70 years, you have lived your useful life. And I'm not very sure, I'm not saying Bangladesh, you will die tomorrow. That lifetime payment may not even take more than 10 years. I would suggest that in those who may not want it, may have to compute it and get it uh, in advance because he's not so sure, maybe for 10 years, so that he, he lives and remains with the little in his pocket. So, Madam Speaker, on the first one, the handshake, I want to move an amendment that we give John Mwanga. Uh, we five, give the Auditor General. No, no, for this one, because this is specific. Uh, why we're saying John Mwanga? Because there will be another one, the handshake will be different. It will be different. This one is going to be because he has served for 20, what? 20 years. So I want to say that for John Mwanga, we give him for his handshake to go home 500 current points. The justification is that we have decided that every year 500, that is 1 billion shilling.
So, uh, uh, so the Kohera Pamin uh, Division, I'm aiming at getting. Uh, 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 you speak. 1,000 is equal to 20 million. 10,000 will be. 10,000, huh? I want you to get 1 billion. So, uh, thank you very much, Sereko, for making an argument. So I want to suggest that we give John Mwanga on his summit as a handshake 50,000 carries point, which is equivalent to currently 1 billion shilling, so that every year where he has worked, he has taken 50 million shillings as his handshake. That's number one. Number two, for an Otegen would qualify. Uh, I want to make those... Are you getting what you... Honorable Nathan is saying, the handshake. Uh, thank you. I want us to dispose a point by point. Uh, Madam Speaker, I do concur with the principle, but I want to propose that instead of one billion we do five hundred million. So that is two hundred and fifty thousand current twenty five thousand currency points. Uh, we are on a uh, award. Yes, Jonah. Right Honourable Speaker, I, I support the motion, but I wanted to draw your attention and uh, the attention of the Minister to Article 254 of the Constitution. It can help us resolve the matter. A public officer shall, on retirement, receive such pension as it's commensurate with his or her rank, salary and length of service. And I think, and I'm proposing, Madam Speaker, that uh, first we don't use the, the word hand, uh, handshake. It's very dangerous for this parliament to proceed that way. But I get the principle that he deserves to be paid what is due to him. And therefore, because he has worked for a number of years, we can arrive at that lump sum pay, which is due to any public officer paid at once and then thereafter you, you provide said, you said article what 254 254 talks about pension yes yes and, and, and that's the principle I am, I am i'm bringing because this is somebody who has worked for 20 years and he's saying that another one may come and work for only two or three years you cannot treat them that the same way because at the beginning the minister and say that this will apply to all auditor general so it's not specific to only uh, the current holder of the office thereafter also we must as a matter of principle provide for the estate in the event that the the person has died what happens to the estate in some other offices human resources the family is provided for for some period afterwards to cater for that that should also be as clear in, in this, an, an amendment of, of that should actually come in. Madam uh, Speaker, why I raise the handshake? Handshake is given to somebody for the good that has been in an office. You may have your rules prescribing how you will be paid your terminal benefits, but a handshake is say thank you, thank you for the good job you have done. And that's why I wanted to concur with the Minister of Finance that he, having computed the other one following the rules, if it comes to now, instead of 1 billion, 500 million, is agreeable because you will compute the other one following the, right, right, the rules put in place. But for purpose of having served 20 years without being, having a problem, the, you see, handshake is known. These are, and our Jonathan knows. Yes, uh, Christine. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I am also proposing in line, 
in line with the handshake, the, the, the wording is not okay. We can pick another thank you, thank you term. But I am also suggesting that let it be a percentage. Because of inflation, the 500 millions may look a lot now. And then it may become very little later. So it should be a percentage probably of a pension of some payment of this officer. But, but what Honorable uh, Oduri is saying, must you call it a handshake? Yes. Right, Honorable Speaker. You, you can't call it a handshake. We are the same people who brought a motion in this house over a handshake. You would rather say a service award? Eh? You get it, eh? Yes, you'd rather say a service award. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in consonance to what Honorable Dula has just uh, also reminded us, under Article 254, we cannot uh, run away from awarding our uh, Auditor General. We should be in position to, by, by principle, what I'm suggesting here, that by principle, let's agree on a principle that we are going to award him a percentage. Then I beg and ask that it's, we, we can have a committee to finalize, uh, composed of you, Speaker, our chair, together with the Minister of Finance and some other three members here, so that according to what we can manage, because we may not be in position to now fully determine the different years in which the installments will be made, we cannot be in position to determine what the budget is having at this hour, but all are all, we are all in agreement that yes, it really deserves something, it deserves a retirement benefit, and the whole parliament is seeing what he has really done. So I beg that we really decide on what we can do, and for me, it's having it's an inner committee composed of your finance and some other members, as we so wish. Thank you. Yes, uh, Honorable Call. Right on about there are two issues we are dealing with. And uh, the first issue is about the pension. And the second issue is about the award, the service award. Right on about, I have been in the Committee of Finance in the 10th Parliament and then the 11th Parliament. I know that there is a subcommittee of finance. I'm not, oh, sorry. I think I'm not communicating. Right on about, I'm saying there are two issues. The issue number one is about the pension. And the issue number two is a service award. And I know that uh, within the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, we have a subcommittee that deals with the Office of the Auditor General. The issue at hand is, is there a formula for pension for the Auditor General? If it's not there, that's what we need to determine. And the second issue is the service award. I actually agree with Honorable Nandal Mafari on the figure that has been, you know, the Minister of Finance also agreeing about the 500 million in terms of service award. But also we need to look at what formula we are going to use for calculation of the pension of Auditor General, not only for this passion, but as a continuity. That's what I'm suggesting. Thank yes, you. Yes, well, sir. Thank you. Uh, then... Uh, Right Honorable Speaker, I thank you so much. First, I support the motion that we need to recognize the distinguished service of Mr. John Mwanga, who has been and remains Auditor General. The purpose of this motion is to make effect the provisions of the Constitution and the Auditor General's Act. Just like our rules of procedure stop us, do not allow us to debate in anticipation, in my view, we cannot sit here and be seen to be making resolutions that are personal to order. 
if we debate the service uh, hours remember i did not mention mwanga i say the auditor general thank you thank you. if i may allow and it. we are not uh, discussing about a person we are discussing about an auditor general thank you i can also be an auditor general Absolutely. tomorrow even you you can be anybody can be what we are doing is what we ought to do as parliament so if i may conclude right honorable speaker yes on i think the thank you the resolutions have the resolution has put across brilliant ideas including continuing getting uh, his pay including the car including the house befitting in my view, we already have in this country, right, Honorable Speaker, a, commissions on, a commission on commissions and awards. I would propose that the distinguished John Mwanga, the Auditor General, gets an award just like many other distinguished persons of this country, and they may do to that effect, so that this parliament is not be seen to be, because whatever we do here has an effect today and tomorrow, right, Honourable So that, that awards commission, what does it do? Does it award you the financials or...? That now, that now is determined by the committee, presidential committee. Were the framers of the law that say that parliament we shall determine, were they not uh, in their normal senses? You are then we can have, we can amend that particular law so that we have distinguished persons who have given effect service. Honorable Wilson. Thank you. This parliament will not give out its powers to a subcommittee created by what we don't know. We, let's determine what an auditor general will get, and that is that. I beg to submit. I, yes. Uh, uh, Nathan, we are still on your, the, yes, on uh, your yes, issue. Yes, yes, Thank you, right, Madam Honorable Speaker. Speaker. Issue, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, yeah. the procedure issue I'm raising is, raising the is that yes. colleagues are showing John Mwanga or the Auditor General as another officer. I want to tell you... Uh, By the way, it's an office of, of parliament. parliament. So, as an office of parliament, wouldn't it be procedure right that, again, parliament determines what our officer is supposed to get. I beg your pardon? I'm saying, Madam Speaker, wouldn't it be procedure right that because the Auditor General is an office of Parliament, wouldn't it be procedure right that Parliament determines what is befitting? That's what we are doing. Nathan. Nathan. You see, I saw Nathan addressing a president that is going to be a president. <laughs> that is my president. Nathan, honorable member, uh, Lop, can I hear from Lop? No, 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 you, you gave me the chance. After Medi, Lop. Yes. Right, honorable speaker. Right, honorable speaker. I don't want us to spend all our time on this. I have seen the Minister of National, Minister of uh, public, public Service. We are independent you. from your public service. Thank you. Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, the distinguished services of the Auditor General are not in doubt and that every single member of this society appreciates the services of the individual but also the integrity he has used in conducting his duties as Auditor General. The question is, we are setting a trend now and that it will come a situation where like the Honorable Nandala Mafabi has said, we will come back here as a house to now pronounce ourselves on servants of this house or members of parliament to whatever. But for us, we have our pension scheme anyway. But now, 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 now that we are setting a new trend of a service award to the servants of this country, 
and that emotion has been generated and that this plenary is going to pronounce itself on a figure probably as proposed by the Honorable Nandala Mafabi or as proposed by the Minister of Finance. Now, that will draw a charge on the consolidated fund. And whenever we are seated here, right, Honorable Speaker, he himself, the Minister of Finance, and we propose certain figures, comes out and states that you cannot post a charge on the consolidated fund. Now, the best thing would be to decide a formula that is adoptable to the office, whether you've served 10 years or 20 years, or whether we say if you've served for a minimum of five years, the currency point shall be this. If you've served for this period, the currency points must be this. Because, because just a second, let me conclude. Because the issue we are talking about is drawing money from a taxpayer to give a service award to, a, to an you. office of a person Thank to hold. You. Therefore, the as, as an individual, I'm a bit hesitant to take on the, this when it's for an individual. Matter here. We must adopt the right Honorable, when we are talking about the service award, service award is not given to everybody who has served in the office. Because not each and every person that will serve in that office will have the integrity and the appreciation that we want to give to this particular person. And therefore, we can have a service award as a figure based on this particular person. And then you determine depending on the other person that you are going to handle. While, while when we are handling issue of pension, that is when we can have a formula of how we can determine the pension, but not service award. Thank you. Thank formula. you. Love, love, then Jonathan. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, as you have guided, because I thought I would share my thoughts about uh, the other elements of the motion, but you've guided that we first dispose um, please of this one. Do it. The, the entire? Yeah. Okay. Um, right Honorable Speaker, the Office of the Auditor General is a critical one um, because it serves us as parliament in doing the audits which feed into the accountability committees that are part of uh, this house. So it's a very critical office. I want to first suggest before I even make my suggested amendments here to the Minister of Finance that in future for you not to be misunderstood because the current Auditor General is on his way out in about two or three months. In future for you not to be misunderstood. Bring these issues early enough because now people might misunderstand you to say you're working on it for him because he's on his way out but let's uh, put that aside uh, Lob, in the future for parliament of uganda not to be misunderstood they should bring this earlier that one uh, honorable musa is just a borrowed gun is a borrowed gun to come and make a presentation on your behalf. So it is you members of parliament who should bring this earlier, not Honorable Musa Sisi. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I was only mentioning him because he's the mover of the motion. We have borrowed uh, him to move. So maybe next time we should borrow him earlier enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but anyhow, Right Honorable Speaker, <laughs> let me make my suggestions. Um, number one, a monthly retirement benefit equivalent to the salary payable to a sitting auditor general, and the retirement benefit shall be paid to the retired auditor general for life. I want to suggest an amendment here because when you are to pay the former auditor general the same as the sitting auditor general, there's a problem because then this one is in office and they are working, the other one is retired, he is former. They cannot be at the same level, honestly. Because then, people will prefer to retire. After all, they will earn the same amount. So, there is a problem with number A. A precedent has been set for many of these offices. And for... Uh, honorable, uh, uh, look, when you, when you say we make some different change, 
give us a, a suggestion. I actually wanted to, I wanted to first give the background and then I make a suggestion. I was going to say, precedent has been set for most of these offices and uh, usually the figure is half. That's what I want to suggest. Um, half of what a sitting one earns, because this one is in retirement, so they cannot be at the same level. So I want to suggest half, right, Honorable Speaker. Two, a furnished house or a one-off payment of 20,000 current C points. I want to suggest 10,000. That's me suggesting. C, an annual medical allowance equivalent to the medical allowance payable to a sitting auditor general. All right, medical allowance given the advanced age. D, a chauffeur-driven car or a one-off payment of 20,000 currency points payable in lieu. I want to suggest 10,000 currency points, which is 200, 000, 200 million. That's what you people were given for cars. So, it's a fair amount. That's my suggestion. As opposed to 20,000 currency points, 10,000 currency points to make 200 mil million. Security, okay. A fuel and vehicle repairs allowance of 100 currency points per month. Okay. An official burial by the state upon death. That's okay. Service award. Right now, speaker, I have issues with uh, this animal called service award. Uh, some have called it a handshake, and uh, I'm glad you've raised the issue of Parliament. In 2018, I believe it was, having discussed handshake, which was problematic. Similarly, a service award, especially when we want to tether it to an individual that it becomes personal to holder, there is a problem with that. Can we discuss a formula to award servants of this country, and not just an individual? or individual office. There's a real problem with that. So I'm personally opposed to this because it will not come off neat. Because that would mean now you're going to, dis each time, you're going to, we are going to be discussing for every individual officer uh, or office bearer. It's even burdensome. It's cumbersome for us to do that. Maybe Ministry of Finance needs to, or whoever, move a motion to say, okay, for servants of this country, a formula of sorts, that is properly understandable. But if Parliament is going to sit each time to discuss for a particular individual, it's a problem. So personally, I'm opposed to this service award. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Members, when we are debating all this, we must be aware that one, this is our staff, two, we passed uh, the one for judges, and we gave the judges what percentage? Eight, seventy-five. How much do we give the judges? Madam Chair, we gave, Madam Speaker, we gave judges the seventy-five percent. Yes. Of the one of the Supreme Court, yes. Yes. Uh, then the ones of... Uh, and when you're and talking all... And when you're talking all this, I want you to know the level of the person you're talking about. The level. It's not like, just like me, me a mere MP. Uh, 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 give me. Yeah. Uh, Madam Speaker, for the record, for the judges, we, we varied them. For example, the Chief Justice is 100%. Chief Justice is 100%. That's what we did here. So, so this, I am making two, I'm making two proposals. The first one is that in, instead of the, the different names we are giving, whether service or what, the motion requires us to determine a retirement benefit. So we are going to call it a retirement benefit. Yes. And my proposal is that uh, after A, we insert the, the following. A, a one-off lump sum retirement benefit equivalent to 2.6% of the annual salary of the retiring auditor general multiplied by five and the years of service. Yes. That uh, this uh, is a formula. Now you leave the, uh, the people, mathematicians to speak. Uh-huh. Yes, and, and I'm not inventing anything new. 
we did the same formula and that gives you a total of 500 exactly exactly give us uh, about five <laughs> as, as one then the the percentage of uh, of uh, of uh, of pay monthly I propose a percent of eighty uh, percent would do. Thank you. Because uh -huh. the minister had come with a hundred percent. The rest remains the same. Yes. Thank you, honourable members. Uh -uh. Nathan. I'm, I'm not uh, going, in. Madam Speaker. Uh, one, the Chief Justice was given hundred percent. Please, please listen to me. And the Auditor General is the one who orders the Chief Justice. In fact, Madam Speaker, if somebody has served with above 70 years... Uh, okay, f let's first hear from him, w from uh, finance, whether there is in agreement with uh, what Honorable Dura said. Madam Speaker and right honorable colleagues, on the first point of proposing a retirement benefit of a lump sum of 26 of the annual salary for five years times the number of years in service as proposed by Honorable Odur. I do agree and I also agree with the proposal by Honorable Mafavi of 100%. This is one person. This Honorable members, Honorable members, I now put a question that the motion for the resolution of Parliament to determine the post-retirement benefits of the Auditor General moved under Section 5.2 of the National Audit Act 2008 be adopted by this August House with amendment from Honorable Dur Jonathan and Honorable Nathan Mafavi Nandala, the Secretary General of, <laughs> of DFCU. Those in favor <laughs> of FDC, those in favor say I'm the control, and eh? the eyes have it. Thank you so much, Nathan, Jonathan, and uh, Finance, and the Hollow House, and uh, Seconda. Plus lobe. Thank you so much. Next. Item 6. Motion for adoption of reports of the following sectoral committees on the ministerial policy statements and budget estimates for the financial year 2024-2025-61. The sectoral committee on public service and local government. Honorable members, you will recall that the House commends consideration of the sectoral committee reports. Mm -hmm on Ministerial Policy Statements on Thursday, 4th April, pursuant to Rule 149 of the Rules of Procedure. Today, the House will proceed with the more committee reports as listed on the order paper. Upon presentation and debate on the report, the House will adopt the reports pursuant to Rule 149.2 of the rules of procedure. The recommendations will then be referred to the Budget Committee for recon Reconciliation, Harmonization, and Consolidation. I now want to invite the Chairperson of Public Service and Local Government to present the report of the committee. Yes. Madam Speaker, I'm just raising the point. And, and I hope the reports that you got, the committees, you consider the reports from opposition. And whoever did not consider the report from opposition will not present, will go back and consider it. Madam Speaker, the procedure which I'm raising you know this house determines a lot of things. We have passed the motion about the Auditor General. But there is one fundamental item which I want to hear from you, Madam Speaker, and the House. If the procedure I'm raising that 
we are assuming the Auditor General who will be coming in place will be retiring at 70 years. Please, I'm not raising that one. That one is done. Is it are we going to be doing it on personal to holder or we have passed this resolution for general? Because why I'm raising it, if I came and I worked up to 55 years of age and I retired as a general, what time do I qualify for whatever? Well, yeah, because that's why I wanted to be sure, Madam Speaker. The formula has provided a number of years. And I knew, and I knew, I knew Honorable Nandala is the best accountant here. Uh, no, I knew you as one of the best accountants here. Uh -uh. The formula is there. Where we find a challenge, we shall come back. We shall come back when you find a challenge. Next item. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. As I embarked on this assignment, permit me to lay on table the report of uh, the committee. I also have the minute of the committee meetings I beg to lay. Please lay. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, allow me to present the report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the Ministerial Policy Statements and Budget Estimates for Financial Year 2024-2025. And for purposes of saving time, I'll request that we move to page 4, uh, which provides a uh, details on the introduction. Right Honorable Speaker, as you stated, on the 15th of March 2024, ministerial policy statements were laid before Parliament and uh, you directed that as required by the procedures, the respective committees should uh, scrutinize these policy statements. And Right Honorable Speaker, in lieu thereof, the Committee on Public Service and Local Government considered the following votes. Number one, vote 011, Minister of Local Government. Vote 147, Local Government Finance Commission. Vote 500, and that is from 601 to 935, Local Governments. Vote 005, Minister of Public Service. And vote 146, Public Service Commission. Right Honorable Speaker, the committee has presented its report in respect to the ministerial policy statements and budget, budgetary provisions for financial year 2024-2025 for consideration and adoption. Right Honorable Speaker, on page 5 is methodology. I request that uh, for purposes of time again, members should uh, permit me to proceed to the next. Again, on the same page, we have compliance to the relevant provisions of the law and cross-cutting issues. I will again, Right Honorable Speaker, request that you allow me to proceed. Number th um, on page 6, 31 is compliance to the National Development Plan, where the entities uh, provided all what was required. Uh, on page 7, Right Honorable Speaker, we have... Number 32, compliance of the uh, M MPS with the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and the rules of procedure of the Parliament of Uganda. We provided a table, table 1, compliance of MPS with Public Finance Management Act financial year 2020, uh, 2024. And for purposes of time again, you can look through. Three. Three, compliance to gender and equity issues. Again, we have provided details which is contained in this document. On page 8, Right Honorable Speaker, compliance with the SDGs. And number 35, compliance with parliamentary recommendations. Honorable Speaker, we have a recommendation on that particular area where the committee recommends that the entities under its 
purview should ensure continued engagement of uh, Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to ensure that the rest of the recommendations are, budget, are budgeted for in the financial year 2024-2025. I will take you to page 9. And page 9, number 40, is public service. Right, Honorable Speaker, this section of the report looks at the performance of the specific vote under the public service sector covering the Ministry of Public Service and Public Service Commission. For one is Minister of Public Service. Right, Honorable Speaker, I have, we have stated the mandates of the Ministry and 4.11 is the strategic objective. Permit me to proceed to the next in the interest of time. On page 9, Right, Honorable Speaker, there are key achievements in the financial year 2023-24 and there are quite a number of them, um, up to 12 key uh, achievements. And again, I'll request that members run through uh, for purposes of time. I'll take you to page 11, right, Honorable Speaker. 413, that is half-year performance. Honorable Speaker, Parliament approved a total budget of 33.586 billion for the Ministry of Public Service, consisting of Uganda shilling 4.576 billion for wage, Uganda shilling 25.756 for non-wage, and 3.2 billion for development as indicated in the table below. That is table number two. Uh, we have provided breakdown. Honorable Speaker, at the end of the quarter two, a, a cumulative total of Uganda shilling 17.245 billion had been released representing 51.3% of the approved annual budget estimates. Out of the release, the ministry spent a total of 11.787 billion representing 68.6% .6 absorption rate at half year as shown in the above table. At the, end of the, at the end of quarter two, a balance of Uganda shilling 5.433 billion remain unutilized within the ministry budget. The unspent balance, balance at the end of the quarter is attributed to several factors, including pending staff recruitment and retirement, delays in procurement processes, and the release of funds designated for two quarters. Consequently, the implementation of activities spanning Two quarters were extended into quarter three. On page 12, right honorable speaker, number 414, Ministry of Public Service budget projections. The ministry's budget is projected to increase by Uganda shilling 2.971 billion, representing 8.1 percent, from Uganda shilling 33.531 billion to Uganda shilling 36.502 uh, billion in the next financial year. And again, we have provided a table that you can look through. That is table three, which is proposed budget estimates for financial year 2024-25 and the medium term um, per category. As seen in the table, as seen in table three above, in financial year 2024-25, Minister of Public Service has been allocated Uganda shilling 36.502 billion, of which 4.278 billion is wage. 29.024 billion is non-wage, 3.2 billion is development budget, and Uganda shilling, 0.056 billion is arrears. The increase in non-wage is attributed to an increase of Uganda shilling, 2.5 billion from the development plan implementation program for the Center for Public Policy Research and Innovation aimed at enhancing performance of public officers, along with an additional Uganda shilling, 0.5 billion, from the Sustainable Energy Development Program. On page 13, right honorable speaker, number 4.1.5, key budget priorities. Honorable speaker, there are key priorities that have been outlined. Um, the key priorities areas for financial year 2024-25 for Ministry of uh, Public Service includes the following. One, continued rationalization of government agencies to eliminate duplication and mandate overlap for improved efficiency in public resource utilization. Two, institu institutionalization, uh, institutionalize a community-based approach to monitoring and reporting compliance with service, service delivery standards. Three, establishment and operationalization of three service Uganda Center for Government Integrated System to improve accessibility and affordability of public service to citizens. Four, funding interventions that leverage on ICT to ensure climate change mitigation and accountability for results and increase scope of work. Five, strengthening of human resource 
uh, management capacity, standards, op operations, and performance management systems in service delivery. Six, operationalization of the National Emoluments Review Body. Seven, reform of public service pension scheme. Eight, procurement of goods and services um, aligning with sustainable public procurement practices and climate change mitigation. And nine, strengthen capacity of public officers in mainstreaming cross-cutting issues including gender, equity, climate change, HIV and TB. Number 4.1.6 is uh, a committee observations and recommendations. One, Roman number one, delayed rationalization of government agencies. Right Honorable Speaker, in 2018, government undertook to rationalize agencies and public ex uh, expenditure under RAPEX with a view of eliminating structures, uh, ambiguities, functional duplication, overlaps, and wasteful expenditures and realizing savings which could facilitate critical public services. Several bills had been introduced on rationalization of government agencies to parliament, but were later withdrawn, faulting certificate on financial implication. The bills are yet to be uh, reintroduced, and, and indeed today you were handling that. Honorable Speaker, committee recommendations. The committee recommends that government fast tracks the process of merging, main, mainstreaming, and transferring of the agencies and report to Parliament before end of the financial year 2023-24. Number two, Roman number two, compensation of staff to be laid off under RAPEX. Uganda shilling 74.034 billion is required to fully cater for the payment of gratuity pension and severance packages for the staff affected by RAPEX. Out of the affected entities, only the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development has a budget provision of Uganda shilling 1.5 for six billion to cater for the affected staff while the rest of the entities are unfunded this is attributed to the fact that the Ministry of Energy Mineral uh, and Mineral Development was among the first entities to be affected by rationalization with rural electrification agency being transferred to the ministry committee recommendation the committee recommends that the Ministry of Finance provides Uganda shilling 74.034 billion in the budget for the financial year 2024-25 to cater for the payment of gratuity, pen pension, and severance packages for the staff affected by RAPEX. Roman number three, establishment and operationalization of the National Emoluments Review Board. Honorable Speaker, government through the Ministry of Public Service under undertook to streamline salaries across the country by establishing a National Emoluments Review Board this was mainly prompted by the huge differences between the salaries of mainstream public servants and those in the statutory agencies. The committee notes that the National Emoluments Review Board shall promote good governance, boost morale, enhance public trust, and contribute to Uganda's economic and social development through improved accountability, equity, and transparency. And transparency. For this cause, the Ministry of Public Service requires a uh, Uganda shilling 0 0.800 billion, which has not been provided for in the budget for the financial year 2024-25. Committee recommendations. The committee recommends that one, Ministry of Public Service expedites the process of establishing and operationalizing the National Emoluments Review Board before end of the financial year 2023-24. Two, Uganda shilling. 0 0.800 billion be provided for in the budget estimate for financial year 24-25 to operationalize the National Emoluments Review Board. Number four, Roman number four, vehicles for former leaders. Ministry of Public Service requires a 7.2 billion for vehicles of former leaders. This is a statutory obligation in fulfillment of the provision of the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act to 2010 and fell due in the financial year 2021-22. The committee notes that, one, the Parliamentary Pension Act 2007, as amended, entitles retirement benefits to retired speakers, such as pension, gratuity, chauffeur-driven cars, medical cars, I mean medical care, security, utilities, and domestic staff. On the other hand, the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act, CAP 263, as amended, entitles retired presidents, vice presidents, and prime ministers to similar retirement benefits. Roman number two, some of the leaders who have retired from, from the offices mentioned in the, in the uh, mention above, in the mention above acts, have held and still hold offices. 
that draw retirement benefits under both the Parliamentary Pensions Act and the Presidential Emoluments and Benefits Act. This creates a risk of duplication and wastage of public resources. Committee recommendation. While funds should be provided for the, pass, the purchase of vehicles for the aforementioned leaders, duplication and wastage of public resources should be avoided. Two, priority should be given to former leaders that currently do not occupy any public office. Three, the aforementioned laws be harmonized or amended to address duplication of retirement benefits. And four, funds be provided for the purchase of vehicles for the aforementioned leaders based on the harmonization of the retirement benefits. Roman number five is pension irregularities. Right Honorable Speaker, over the years, the Auditor General's report have indicated that many staff and retirees first delayed access to salary and pension payroll despite the decentralization of the payroll in, re in the respective institutions. The delay is attributed to mainly mismatch of data between NIRA and IPPS interface. Ministry of Public Service is currently rolling out the Human Capital Management System, which aims at addressing these challenges. To date, Ministry of Public Service has finalized the rollout of the HCM in 49 entities under Phase 2. The committee observed that delayed access to pension payroll contravenes Article 254 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995, which provides that the payment of pension shall be prompt and regular and easily accessible to pensioners. Such delays lead to poor well-being of the affected retirees, as well as accumulation of pension arrears, and this frustrates the effort in achieving social protection of the retirees. Committee recommendations. One. Ministry of Public Service should ensure that the human capital management system is rolled out expeditiously to all entities to resolve the identified gaps. Two, Ministry of Public Service should ensure that the system automatically transitions employees from the salary payroll to pension payroll once they clock the retirement age. Roman number six, the Public Service Pension Fund Bill. According to Public Service uh, Minister of Public Service, the Public Service Pension Fund Bill has since been reviewed in light of the proposals from Parliament and other consultative meetings in preparation for first reading. However, the Ministry has a funding gap of Uganda shilling 1.7 billion, which will be used to support pre-reform activities for the intended Public Service Pension Reform process, including the Public Service Pension Fund Act, regulation, sensitization activities, and many others. Committee recommendations. The committee recommends that the Minister of Public Service expedite, expedites any pending processes on the bill and ensures that it is brought to Parliament before the end of financial year 2023-24. Two, an additional Uganda shilling 1.7 billion is provided in the budget for financial year 2024-25 to support the, the necessary pre-reform activities for public service pension reform process. Roman number seven, verification of payroll by the Auditor General, which requires uh, Uganda shilling 1.3 billion. The Minister of Public Service placed a ban on recruitment to allow the Auditor General to carry out audit on the staff payroll. Whereas this was a good gesture, it has affected service delivery across MDS. Based on the recent finding of the Auditor General, there was a revision of wage for all votes based on the number of employees cleared during the a special audit. The ministry had a reduction of Uganda shilling 0.298 billion in the wage amount. The report by the Office of the Auditor General also recommend, recommended verification of the partially verified public officers and officers appointed after the audit exercise. This output has, has been partially funded and the number of public officers expected to be verified are beyond what had been initially anticipated. The ministry requires a 1.35 uh, billion for this exercise, but only Uganda shilling 0.05 billion has been provided, leading to a shortfall of U uh, Uganda shilling 1.3 billion. Recommendations. The Minister of Finance provides 1.3 billion in the financial year 2024-25 to expedite and conclude the process of verification of public officers. Two. The Office of the Auditor General expedites the verification process, particularly 
the officers who were appointed after the initial verification process. And Roman number three, Minister of Public Service should lift the ban on recruitment to enable entities carry out planned recruitment and address the problem of understaffing, which is greatly affecting service delivery. Honorable Speaker, number four two is uh, vote 146, Public Service Commission. Uh, 421, right Honorable Speaker, talks about the mandate. Permit me to move to the next page, uh, which is 422, Strategic Objectives. Again, I request that you allow me to move to the next page. And the next page is uh, 423, which provides uh, achievements. And um, we have provided a detailed table, right Honorable Speaker, which runs from page 20 to 21. And I'll request that you allow me to proceed to page 22. Page 22, number 424, is uh, the financial year 2023-24 half-year performance. Right Honorable Speaker, Parliament approved Uganda shilling 11.893 billion for Public Service Commission in the financial year 2023-24. And the table below gives uh, details of the performance. As indicated in the table 5 above, out of the approved budget, of Uganda shilling 11.893, the commission had only spent Uganda shilling 4.896 billion by end of quarter two, representing 41.1%. 425, right honorable speaker, is budget estimate and medium term budget allocation. The commission's budget for financial year 2024-25 stands at Uganda shilling 12.916 billion as detailed in table six below. And we have provided the details right there, right on board speaker. The commission's budget is projected to increase by 8.6, I mean 8.5 billion from 11.893 billion to 12.916 billion in the next financial year as shown in the table above. And honorable speaker, the next page, page 23, gives a key priorities as provided in the table. And for purposes of time, right honorable speaker, permit me to move to page 24 and take you through the committee observations and recommendations. And that is uh, number 427, committee observations and recommendation. One, under rollout of e-recruitment system to district and city service commission. Honorable Speaker, the committee observed, let me take you straight to committee observations. The committee observed that one, corruption and nepotism has been rampant in the recruitment process. In order to, in order to curtail corruption and improve and improve transparency at the district and city service commission, there is an urgent need to roll out the e-recruitment system. Roman number two, roll out of the e-recruitment system is however likely to affect some districts like in Karamoja sub-region due to the poor network coverage and technical glitches. Committee recommendations. Minister of Public Service should work with NITAU to address the said challenges on network coverage in the affected areas. Roman number two, Uganda shilling 4.3 billion be provided in the budget to enable public service commission upgrade and roll out the e-recruitment processes across the country. Roman number two, two, lack of development budget. Again, right honorable speaker, the committee observed that the public service commission has been operating without a development budget, yet it has, it has priorities to be fulfilled under its core mandate as a result. Some key activities were carried out and the priorities that have been unfunded under the, the development budget includes the, the following. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have provided details of that. You can look through, and let me take you through the recommendations. The committee recommends that the Public Service Commission's development budget of Uganda shilling 5.412 billion be provided or reinstated in the financial year 2024-25, and funds are released accordingly. Roman number three on page 26 is non-wage recurrent budget. The Public Service Commission's non-wage recurrent budget was cut down, leading to failure to carry out a number of key activities. The priority areas under the non-wage recurrent budget that were affected include the full rollout of the e recruitment system to district and city service commission, which is necessary to minimize on operational cost of conducting physical interviews promote transparency and reduce corruption allegations on the city and district service commissions. Two, support to districts city 
uh, district and city service commission in order to stop irregularities and corruption and recruitment as disciplinary control within local governments. And three, because of the newly appointed public servant and members of city and district service commission, in addition to validation of permanent and contract staff. The committee recommends that the non-wage recurrent budget for public service commission of 12.4 billion be included in the financial year 2024-25 and funds be availed on time. On page 27, number 50 is the local government sector. This sector, I mean, this section of the report, Honorable Speaker, looks at performance of the specific votes under the local government sector, which includes vote 001, I mean 011, Ministry of Local Government, vote 147, Local Government Finance Commission, and vote 601 to 935, all local governments in Uganda. Number 51, vote 011, Ministry of Local Government. Honorable Speaker, under that, we have provided uh, clearly on the mandates of the ministry, and number 511 is the strategic objective of the ministry. Permit me to take you to the next page. The next page, page 28, looks at major achievements that the ministry scored in the financial year 2023-24, and some of the half-year achievements of the ministry includes the following. We have provided a list of uh, the achievements, there are quite a number. Permit me to take you to the next page, which is page 29. Number 513 is half-year performance for financial year 2023-24. Right, Honorable Speaker, in the financial year 2023-24, the Ministry of Local Government was allocated a total of 166.191 billion, as indicated in the table 8 below. Out of the approved budget of 166.191 billion in the financial year 2023-24, Uganda shilling 10.093 billion was for wage, 30.614 billion was for non wage, 22.560 for capital development expenditure, Uganda shilling 102.816 billion for external financing, and 0 0.107 billion for domestic areas as seen above in Table 8. By end of the financial year 2023, Uganda shilling 80. 9.535 billion, which represents a 53.8 percent, had been released out of uh, out of Uganda shilling 56.867 billion, uh, which was spent representing an absorption rate of 63.51 percent. Right, honourable speaker, the budget allocation for the Ministry of Local Government. In the financial year 2024-25, the ministry has been allocated a total budget of Uganda shilling 202.395 billion, as summarized in Table 9 below. We have given details, right, Honorable Speaker. Out of the total budget, 202.395 billion, Uganda shilling 9.297 billion is to finance wage bill of the ministry. 43.712 billion for non wage recurrent expenditures. The budget for Uganda, Government of Uganda Development, amounts to Uganda shilling 21.360 billion, while that of, I mean, that for external financing totals to Uganda shilling 127.789 billion. In addition, the ministry has been allocated Uganda shilling 0 0.237 billion for pension and gratuity arrears and other domestic areas. Number 5.15, ministry, ministry of Local Government's priority for the financial year 2024-25. Based on the above proposed budget in Table 9, in the financial year 2024-25, the ministry has prioritized the following. One is coordination and monitoring of PDM implementation. Roman number two, rehabilitation of agro-processing facilities. Roman number three, waste management. Roman number four, local economic development. I'll take you to page 31. Roman number five, agri-late. Roman number six, markets and agricultural trade improvement project. This is MATIP 3. And to provide some detail, right honorable speaker, review uh, under this, the ministry plans to review and prepare designs for eight markets of Nebi Central, Nyahuka Town Council, Iganga Central, Kotido Main Market, Kisoro Old Market, Karunguza Daily Market, Kibale Town Council, Mpiji Central, and Masindi. In addition, 
the ministry will identify and prepare eight temporary relocation sites in urban centers and uh, uh, undertake needs assessment for value addition facilities under MATIP 3. Committee observations and recommendations. One, harmonization of the legal framework. The committee observed that the contradictions in the legal framework surrounding local government finances have affected service delivery for several years now. Committee observes that whereas the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995 and the Local Government Act Cap 243 provide for decentralization and the devolution of functions, powers and services and empower local governments to levy, charge, collect and appropriate local revenues, local revenues are in, instead remitted to the consolidated fund. This is attributed to the Treasury single account payment processing and reporting system. And the directive by Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to transit all rec local revenues collected to consolidated fund for subsequent allocation to the respective local government. As a result, local governments face financial difficulties because of the increase and incons consistent retention of local revenue by the central government over time. For instance, right honorable speaker, Uganda shilling 3.1 trillion was held in the consolidated fund in the financial year 2023-24. This has crippled service delivery at the level, I mean at the local level in that urgent and even simple services like garbage collection have stagnated. More importantly, local governments have been demoralized and rendered powerless to effect service delivery, which has also demoralized taxpayers from paying taxes. As a result, the share of local revenue contribution to the national envelope has dropped from 13% in the financial year 2022 to 9.8% currently. The committee observes that decentralization was intended to extend services closer to the people and recognize the economic and social transformational frontline role that local governments play to deliver services to the people. This role should be aided and not curtailed. While the committee recognizes that the previous system where local revenues would be collected and spent at source at challenges, recentralization of local revenues is not the solution. Government should instead focus on addressing the challenges associated with spending local revenues at source by, for example, on first enforcing its pol policy reform to address capacity gaps in competence and corruption in local government. The committee also takes notes of the fact that Parliament has time and again expressed the need to review the seemingly contradictory legal frameworks, but Minister of Finance has not taken concrete steps to reverse the status quo. Committee recommendation. One, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should withdraw the directive to local governments to remit local revenues collected by the local governments to the consolidated fund in line with section 29.1 and section 3 of the Public Finance Management Act. I mean 29.1 and 3 of the Public Finance Management Act. And local governments be allowed to collect, manage, and spend the local revenues from a general fund account maintained at the district level in accordance with section 80 to 82 of the Local Governments Act and other relevant laws. Two. The Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development and, and Local Government Ministry expedite the process of addressing the shortcomings associated with the collection and management of local revenues at source by local governments before and at the end of the calendar year 2024 to aid the local governments in handling their local revenues. Under MATIP 3, our Right Honorable Speaker, Committee of Observations, all the markets built under MATIP 1 and 2 are complete and functional. Two. There has been significant economic improvement and household income in the areas where the MATIP markets have been constructed. Three, there are design challenges and gaps in the completed MATIP markets that are posing serious challenges to the vendors in those markets. Four, functionality and utilization in some markets remain poor, for example in Busia municipality where the market is functioning at about 30%. Four, some cities are highly populated, hence the overcrowding in the constructed markets. Uh, five. Six, actually. The MATIP markets are concentrated majorly in cities and municipalities 
leaving out town councils that are highly populated and requires a such facilities. Recommendations. One, funds be availed for the additional aid markets under MATIP 3. Two, in addition to the aid markets, Ministry of Local Government should include Kaliro Town Council, Kamuli Municipality, Ajumani Town Council, and additional market for Gulu City. Three, Ministry of Local Government should carry out a detailed technical assessment of the constructed markets with a view of correcting the de defects and design errors therein. Four, Ministry of Local Government should use the existing markets and the challenges observed in their operationalization in to inform the design for the plan MATIP 3 markets. And four, Ministry of Local Government should pay attention during the design phase and all the consultants accountable for any design flaws. Roman number three, remuneration of leaders. Honorable Speaker, the committee observed that local service delivery and overall development across the country is greatly dependent on motivated and well-facilitated political leaders who carry out monitoring, oversight, legislation, and executive functions in local governments. However, the remuneration of local government leaders is poor and affects their performance and also fuels corruption. Secondly, local political leaders are not entitled to gr gratuity on completion of their term of office, unlike civil servants who get gratuity and pension. The Ministry of Local Government and other stakeholders have, over the years, recommended improving the payment of local council chairpersons and councillors, but they but, but these recommendations have not been implemented, yet the roles of local leaders keep increasing. For instance, the increased supervisory roles under the parish development model, under the parish development model. Renumerating the above categories of political leaders will require 378 billion, 8903 million, 300,000 shillings per annum up from 76 billion, 830 million, 60,000 shillings. The committee recommends that one, the proposal on enhancement of salaries for political leaders at all levels of local government be given due consideration and their pay revised upwards. Two, a budget for gratuity for political leaders be included in the ministry's plan going forward and ensure that it is included in the budget estimate for financial year 2025-2026. Roman number four, parish development model. Given the various issues regarding the PDM, Parliament has since resolved that Ministry of Local Government should be facilitated to complete rollout and monitoring of the PDM. Recommendation. The committee recommends that Uganda shilling 18 billion be provided for full rollout of PDM in the financial year 2024-25, including 8 billion for the PDM Secretariat and 10 billion for Ministry of Local Government. For Ministry of Local Government. B, equity and gender under PDM. Right Honorable Speaker, the Equal Opportunity Commission report released in November 2023 noted that PDM guidelines ring fence quotas for special interest groups which is 30% youth, 30% women, 10% elderly, 10 and 10% dis dis disabled, but are not being followed by most local governments. This is attributed to the focus on the households and the criteria for allocation of PDM funds based on the number of parishes rather than the population size, which has resulted in inequity in distribution of funds. This concern has also been noted in the alternative ministerial policy statement. The Minister of Local Government explained that it has disseminated the guidelines and provided technical field support to all local governments to ensure that the percentage allocation are followed. The allocation of funds to the beneficiaries is done by SACOS. The Minister of Local Government intends to follow up the activities of these SACOS. The review process for this pro, pro rata allocation of PDM form are funds based on the number of parishes is being undertaken by the Minister of Local Government for the attention of cabinet. The committee also noted that the EOC report recommends improvement of, re of regional balance in some projects, such as the food security and nutrition projects where Karamoja and Bukedi, which are the most affected regions, are not covered. Ministry of Local Government explained that the National Development Plan 3 
chose eight regions to focus on, but undertook to ensure that the new projects take into consideration the two underserved regions, that is Karamoja and Bukedi. In addition, the Equal Opportunity Commission report pointed out the majority of local government councils also do not have standard rams and suitable office environment for people with disability. EOC recommended improvement of the infrastructure to enable people with disability participate in decision making. The Ministry of Local Government undertook to communicate to the local governments to improve the existing ex in infrastructures to provide rams for persons with disability on all office infrastructure. Recommendation Ministry of Local Government should ensure that affirmative action for disadvantaged regions is covered in its project. Two, Ministry of Local Government should communicate to all local governments to ensure a safe environment for people with disability and follow up to ensure they have implemented the infrastructure update. Induction of local government. Honorable Speaker, cases of conflict in local government continue to persist. This is attributed to lack of induction on roles and responsibilities of different players in local government. Ministry of Local Government is in need of 5 billion shillings condu to conduct induction for newly elected local leaders in the remaining local government. The committee observed that the induction of local leaders at this time is likely to be a waste of resources since the next general election season starts next year and the new leaders may be elected. Committee recommendation. The committee recommends that one, the Minister of Local Government should instead plan for induction in the financial year 2025-2026 budget for the new leaders who will have been elected in the 2026 general election since the current leadership will be ending their term of office in the same financial year. Two, Uganda shilling three billion from the proposed five billion for induction in the ministry's budget for 2024-25 be allocated to facilitate the ministry in ensuring the functionality of the agro-processing facilities that were built under CAIP. Under CAIP. Three, Uganda shilling two billion from the proposed five billion for induction be allocated for capacity building activities under the Ministry of Local Government. Roman number five, review of decentralization. Again, permit me to look through the recommendations. Thank you. Right, Honorable Speaker, the committee recommends that Uganda shilling two billion in the budget for financial year 2024-25 be provided to cover consultation and preparatory activities for the review of decentralization policy throughout the country. Number seven, operationalization of the remaining five cities. Right, Honorable Speaker, Parliament approved the establishment of 15 cities in 2020, of which 10 cities are already operational. The remaining five cities of Wakiso, Entebbe, Kabale, Moroto, and Nakasongola are set to commence on 1st July 2025, and the Minister of Local Government requires a 1 billion shilling for preparatory activities. The committee recommends that funds worth Uganda shilling 1 billion for preparatory activities. Which, 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 is, which cities? Right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, these are cities that were approved by Parliament in 2020, and they are Wakiso, Entebbe. Kabale, Moroto, and Nakasongola. Right, Honorable Speaker, the committee recommends that funds of Uganda, worth Uganda shilling one billion for preparatory oh, oh, activities. Honorable members, before we start clapping, we need to know that do we have the money to operationalize any administrative unit? The minister should be able to tell us that. Thank you, we, right? Do we have the money for the road fund for administrative units? Bef Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. On page 38, uh, digital, digital, digitalization of local government revenues, permit me to take you only through the recommendation. The committee recommends that the Ministry of Local Government receives all the support needed to continue rolling out um, the digitalization process to enable all local governments to improve their revenue performance as this would contribute to better service delivery and governance in the local revenue. Roman number nine, budget performance. 
performance on mandate. Honorable Speaker, permit me to take you to page 39 on recommendation. The committee recommends that the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should ensure full and timely release of the approved funds to Minister of Local Government to enable it to undertake crucial activities without strain. Number B, limited funds and late release. The committee recommends the following. One, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should always release the budgeted for funds in time and in full to enable the Minister of Local Government. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg for your protection. Thank you. Roman number two, Minister of Finance should provide the funds for inspection and supervision to the Minister of Local Government to be effective to be an effect, effective driver of development across the country. Roman number 40, right honorable speaker, on under absorption of funds. Permit me to take you through the recommendation. The committee recommends the following. That the Minister of Local Government should ensure timely initiation of procurement and engage all stakeholders involved in procurement processes in order to absorb the budgeted funds and prevent the possibility of money being swept back to the consolidated fund. Two. The concerned entities in the procurement processes should abide by the Public Procurement and Public Di Disposal Act as amended to ensure that votes are able to be um, are absorbed accordingly. Honorable Speaker, on page 41, that is vote 601 to vote 935. That covers all local governments. Honorable Speaker, on page 41, strategic objectives and achievements of the local governments on page 42, resource envelope for local government. In financial year 2024-25, local governments have been allocated 5 trillion 816 billion, of which 3 trillion 333 billion is wedge, 1 trillion 547 billion is non wedge, and government of Uganda development is 644 billion, and uh, 292 billion is uh, local revenue. All these funds will be spent on, the, on delivery of the decentralized services as per second schedule of the Local Government Act, CAP 243, and the schedule as detail um, allocation per local government is annexed. We have provided that in the report. Committee observations, right, Honorable Speaker, permit me to take you directly to recommendations on page 43. The committee recommends that an additional 300 million be provided within the budget for financial year 2024-25 for Department of Urban Administration, including increased subvention for UAAU and AMICAL. Under sustainable urbanization and housing, there are recommendations. The committee recommends that an additional Uganda shilling 144 million is provided in the financial year 2024-25 to enable local governments deliver on their mandates under this program. Next, Roman number three is delayed disbursement of funds. Permit me to take you to page 44 and, and go straight to recommendations. The committee recommends that the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should ensure timely release of funds to local government as per the approved work plan. Roman number four is inadequate staffing of local governments. Permit me to take you through page 45 and straight to recommendations. The committee recommends that Minister of Local Government should seek fresh approval from the Minister of Public Service in order to fill the pending positions. Roman number five is funding for 327 sub-counties displaced by new town councils. Right, Honorable Speaker, there are these town councils that, that were, I mean the sub-counties, that require 16.35 billion. The committee recommends that Uganda shilling 16.35 billion be given to support the construction of office block for these 327 displaced sub-counties. Right, Honorable Speaker, some of these sub-counties are sitting under trees. Some of them are using kiosks. Honorable Speaker, number four is procurement of, of motor vehicles for local government leaders. Honorable Speaker, I'll take you straight to recommendations, but it is sad, it is sad Honorable Speaker, to note that we have, we have lost already local government chairpersons and some of them have been involved in accident and they haven't recovered. Because they don't have transport, they are using vehicles that are in dangerous mechanical conditions. 
and the committee recommends the following. That Uganda shilling 36.96 billion to procure double cabin pickups for 176 local government leaders at 210 million shilling each be provided to help in enhancing service delivery at local government level. Number six is ex gratia and honoraria for local government leaders. Again, the committee recommends the following. One, Uganda shilling 33 billion shortfall for ex gratia and honoraria of local government leaders be included in the budget. There is a shortfall of that amount. Number two, 9.9 .9 billion be provided to cover areas. There has been an area of 9.9, .9, so it has to be provided in the next financial year's budget. Under road fund, right, Honorable Speaker, in this financial year, one billion was allocated to all local governments for road maintenance. We have talked about it. Let me now take you through the recommendations. Minister of Finance should honor the directive on the release of the one billion for roads to all districts, cities, and municipalities. Two, Minister of Finance should release all the road funds by a third quarter, as it is with other development funds. Three, Uganda Road Fund and Minister of Finance provide required funds to, to all unserved town councils and sub-counties to boost physical plan implementation, access, and local economic development. Let me take you straight to recommendation. The committee recommends that each of the 10 cities and 31 munis municipalities be provided with full set of road equipment. That is on page 47. Number, Roman number 8, conditional grant for physical planning. The recommendation, the committee recommends that Minister of Finance should, ma should make budgetary provisions for physical planning in cities, municipalities, and town council. Roman number 9, delayed clearance to recruit. Recommendation, the committee recommends that the Minister of Public Service should give authority to recruit in June so that recruitment processes can start in July for each of the financial year. There is a tendency of delay, right, Honorable Speaker, which hinders uh, these activities. I will take you to now page 48, which is uh, vote 147, Local Government Finance Commission. Uh, that page looks at strategic objectives and achievement. Page 49 runs through. Permit me to take you to page 50. Page 50 is on half-year performance of financial year 2023-24. Again, we have provided those details. Permit me to take you to the next, which is budget estimate for financial year 2024-25 and the medium term uh, per category. Uh, for financial year 2024-25, the commission has been allocated Uganda shilling 11.7 billion, which is a decrease by 0 0.001 from Uganda shilling 11.008 to Uganda shilling 11.007 in the next financial year, as provided in the table below. On page 51, we have provided observations, and let me take you straight to recommendations. The committee recommends the, committee rec rec recommends the following. Minister of Local Government proceeds to engage with the Attorney General to give legal opinion on the constitutional issues raised by the Local Government Finance Commission. Two, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should always comply with the Constitution in ensuring that the budget for local government finance commission, as approved by Parliament, is not varied during the financial year. Next page is 52. Thank you for the water. Uh, number two, lack of retooling budget. Recommendation. The committee recommends that Uganda shilling, 600 million is provided to the local government finance commission for retooling in order for the commission to fully operationalize. Honorable Speaker, here the, com the, the commission lacks a transport. Uh, there are sad cases where the chairperson of the commission of the, and the team have uh, had mechanical breakdown on their way and they failed to reach their destination. Recommendation. The committee recommends that, um, again, I had already read that 600 million be provided to um, this commission, local government finance commission. Roman number three, integrated revenue administration system, IRAS. Recommendation. The committee recommends that local government finance commission should prioritize the rollout of IRAS in all local governments to address the challenges of local revenue collection and management. Roman number four, gender and equity compliance. 
recommendation. The committee recommends that the Local Government Finance Commission pays attention to any and address gender and equity issues with the guidance of the Equal Opportunity Commission as so as to continue improving its um, score. Right, Honorable Speaker, there are key unfunded and underfunded priorities for financial year 2024-25, and the committee identified the critical yet unfunded priorities as listed. We have provided a detailed list of these unfunded priorities, right, Honorable Speaker. Um, in the interest of time, I would request that you allow me to run through them very quickly, if that is uh, permitted. Honorable Mapendusi, the report you have given us is an oversight report for the whole sector. Huh? A very big report, and, and I wish you people have been giving such reports. As of today, my expectation was the sector budgetary allocation for 2024, the budgetary shortfall, observations, and recommendations. That's what I expected of you. But you've taken us through the whole because at the end of the day, you're going to do harmonization, the reconciliation, and consolidation, uh, con consolidation with the what? With the budget committee. So thank you for giving us all that long report. Uh, thank the, you very much. The right. shortfalls will be looked at by the budget committee. Thank you very much. I take your advice, right, Honorable Speaker. But, uh, and all the other chairpersons that are coming, we just want the shortfalls, the budgetary allocation, and uh, your recommendations, and what you think should be done by this House to help. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. I take that guidance. Uh, it is only our hope that the unfunded and underfunded priorities be given due attention because if we care about this country then local governments have to be given what they deserve right honorable speaker uh, with that uh, permit Thank me you. Um, right honorable speaker i would like to bring to your attention that there is also a minority report Thank you Thank you very much right honorable speaker Yes can we hear the minority report with the guidelines that I've given. Yeah, right, Honorable, with that guidance, but it's the very matter of policy, and given that we are handling policies. Right, Honorable, I thank the committee chair uh, for the very time we went through, because I'm in agreement with all the issues we handled. And as I start my minority report, please allow me to lay on table the very report I'm about to cite out. Right, Honorable Speaker, as we emphasize the need for ensuring that we strengthen local governments in the country, let's please look at that report fully. Right, Honorable Speaker, my minority, my minority issue is about PDM, the Parish Development Model. And right, Honorable Speaker, allow me to bring to this house, uh, to bring to the attention of this house that there are several matters we cited as the alternative government and we found that the PDM as earlier on uh, envisaged has got several gaps and as part of our observations we are seeing that the PDM today as launched in 2022 is not delivering as expected recall we were promised that is this is going to be the game changer of all things and getting to the very pa last page, we are saying that, the very first page, we are saying that uh, the uh, Parish it's, Development it's Model... It's going to be a game changer by which year? We were promised at the start that in everything, the PDM that is coming, this model for you this time... You know, everything that you do has a timeline. By 2030, 2025, 20... We just... Madam Speaker, I beg I first present, then members understand my issues, they get everything, then later on I can get further into the details. Right, Honorable Speaker, 
It is important to recall that the government of Uganda indeed has over the years come up with different programs meant to improve the living conditions of Ugandans and unfortunately, unfortunately none of the programs have made meaningful positive economic and social impacts on the population partly because of the way they are implemented. We should recall that when we talk about the PDM, it, represent, it, it replaced programs like UEP, where our money was as women of Uganda, NADS, Lue Renzoli Development Program, among others. And it's therefore our constant view as this side of the house that the PDM is not translating into increased household incomes and alleviation of poverty in its current state. We should note the current state. Nor can it substantively, substantively improve the quality of life of citizens or contribute to an increase in production. The model, as in its current state, is characterized by mismanagement at the point of uh, introduction of groups. And also, we look at how the officials in Chitogum in 2021 had to be arrested over misappropriation of 526 million. We still note that the model in its current state does not have a unified monitoring tool. There exists unapproved circles since the inception of the model two years back, and it is discriminatory in nature as I ant interacted with several of uh, Muslim communities in these local governments. They cannot take on this because in their beliefs they don't allow the very any anything that attracts in interests. In the very main report, we've already given the quotas that one I'm in agreement that is not also observing the quotas as highlighted before. The and also this program, it adopted a one size fits all method of allocation of funds in total, disregard of our, the varying population in this country of the parishes. A, a parish like Chireka in Wakiso with over 100 people is compared to the same and also a parish like Mutungo, which has got 64,663 people, is also compared to the same, like a smaller parish, like Ibuya Woro Parish in Ajumani, that has 892 people. This is per, as the UBAS, the latest UBOS population statistics. And also, this very model, as we talk today, is not considering the different things. We therefore propose the, the, different, uh, the different needs of the different societies. We therefore uh, now request that today. But she, Speaker, she was even finishing. Madam Speaker. Beg, uh, Madam Speaker, I, I beg I finish, then later on you can give the overall ruling such yeah, that at least this idea can be good. I beg, Madam Speaker, to be given space. And let her finish. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I therefore recall that there is need to entirely change the PDM the way it's being put and to us. We propose as the alternative government that right now we should have a program that is taking care of the different physical features in the country have, a, a model that is taking care of our population sizes in the country, a model that is really looking at how this country has different activities as far as economics is concerned. And we look at the comparative advantage of each and Thank every you. area. You're, you're still ready. And we are bringing forth Ubuntu local government model. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ethel, Ethel, thank you so much. And thank you for your point of departure. Honorable members, in your point of departure, I expected you to pick the loopholes. Not the whole uh, PDM is bad. I wanted you to pick the loopholes of PDM bring the alternative policy as alternative government. Alternative policy 
on how the loopholes can be corrected other than bringing the total overhaul. So I think next time when you make uh, an alternative statement, you'd bring the alternative policy that if you were the one in the government, I would do A, B, C, D. You would change everybody into a money economy in one day. And how do you do this? You would do it A, B, C, D. Thank you so much. Here's a Minister of Information. Thank you very much, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. I just wanted to make a small comment that the, the parish development model is targeting Ugandans, particularly households which are in subsistence livelihood. That stand at 39% of the Ugandan households. And you cannot measure impact after one year for a program. It requires actually at least three years going upward. So it's unfair to say that PDM has not created an impact when it has just started. That's why so I was I, asking for the how for uh, after absolutely. how long. So I beg my sister to be patient for the program to be implemented. Then you can measure whether it has impact or not. But you cannot measure impact on the first day. Yes. I am just giving you technical advice. Thank yes. you. Mm. Yes, uh, a minister of uh, local government. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Um, right Honorable Speaker, I, I'd like to start by thanking the committee and its leadership. Thanks for a very good report. As a sector, we fully agree with the report and the recommendations. And really, just two, three things to highlight there, then I can give my comment on the minority report. Right Honorable Speaker, the issue of allowing local governments to retain their local revenue. Parliament made its resolution. As a sector, we fully agree with Parliament on this matter. It does not make any economic sense to tell a local government in Kapchorwa, in when Bunibujo. When you brought an amendment on the Public Finance Management Act, I thought it was a collective responsibility. So go back to cabinet and bring an amendment on the Public Finance Man Management Act. Not so, oh, oh. Oh, oh, you first give oh, oh the microphone. Oh, oh, your ex right honorable is now the minister for defense. He's a big man. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of his local revenues coming from Tororo, coming to Kampala, he also agrees. You don't bring money from Tororo, bring no, it to the president, uh, look at it, take it back. But we've agreed we should have an amendment. I thank you very much, it. right honorable. We should have an amendment. Secondly, uh, uh, Please, please. Right, Honorable. Secondly, on the issue of the new cities, I just wanted to make the clarification. The current ban of government is on creation of new administrative units. These cities, we're talking about Moroto, Kabale, Nakasongola, Entebbe, Wakiso. We are not talking about creating them. They were already created. I'm talking about operationalizing the units which already created. And we need a, a position of parliament at this time because I'm sure electoral commission needs to be guided in terms of the way ahead. But in terms of when should they be functional or when do they start, it is the 1st of July 2025. So it's not really a requirement for this current budget in terms of funding them. What we now need is just one billion shillings to carry out studies on the boundaries, on the revenue capacities and so on, which we shall then pre present to the parliament. Thirdly, on the issue of ex gratia of the local councillors, colleagues, it's an agreed position of parliament and really it's good practice to avoid supplementary budget if we know that it will happen. 
already we're telling you that there are some funds in terms of areas and shortfalls in the budget to pay the council as ex gratia. And it's coming to 42 billion. When we don't include it in this coming year's budget, it, we are creating a supplementary budget, even at the beginning. I think for me that is an important point we need to, to look at. Uh, then, um, right honorable speaker, the fiscal planning, we have prioritized it because of the increased urbanization in the country. Really, we need a fund for physical planning so that we have well-guided urbanization in the country. We are requesting for only $5 billion. Why are we bringing these and why did we bring them to the committee? They are considered at this stage as unfunded priorities. And it is this House really to appropriate and to pronounce itself on this. I totally agree with the committee. We are going to give a guideline. We are going to issue a circular to local governments to ensure that in their buildings they include a ramp for persons with a disability. Thanks for bringing that out. I think for me it's really important. Now, right honorable speaker, on the issue of the minority report, I've listened very carefully. It's an important point she's making because if we say PDM is not delivering, then you're saying even the budget for PDM should be excluded. But I've looked at the arguments made by my colleague, the Honorable Shadow Minister of Local Government. Number one, she says there were some inadequacies in other government programs aimed at improving the livelihood of the people. Therefore, PDM is also likely to face the same challenge. I beg to disagree because the program called PDM has had a different design and different preparatory activities. It is people owned, the funds are going directly to the people and they stay with the people. It is directly funded in terms of the money goes from the treasury to the circle accounts. And when we look at the performance so far, the achievements actually attest the efficiency of PDM. You gave us 1.1 trillion shillings um, last financial year. We have disbursed all of it except 20 billion. A performance of 98% for such a, a program across the whole country. Really give it its credit in the first year. We are now looking at effectiveness. The people who got the money, how are they using it? How is it transforming their lives? But I think for me, it's not good uh, reasoning, it's a bit fallacious to say that if one program failed or did not perform properly, then the next one will certainly do the same. I don't agree with that. Secondly, the argument that my colleague gives, the minister, the shadow minister of local government, is that PDM is devoid of transparency and accountability, that some of our officials were arrested for mismanagement of funds. I totally agree with that, right honorable speaker, in 2021, a number of local government officials were arrested and they were made to pay back. But we learned from that and the system was changed. The money for PDM is no longer going through the chief administrative officer or town clerk. It goes directly to the SACO account. And that has removed the bureaucracy and red tape at that level. So for me, um, and then when you look at the money lost, because it's not all rosy. We may, even at the circle level, we are having some irresponsible circle chairpersons. We're talking of a loss of about 1.5 billion shillings. But when you look at a program of 1.1 trillion, and you have an error of 1.1 billion, an error of 0.1 percent, statistically, really, you cannot criticize that program and you say it should be scrapped. The third argument is, PDM is discriminatory, especially to the Muslims. Now, colleagues, that's a very important point. Now, when you look at what explanation we've given and the guidelines we've given you, PDM um, is repaid after two years, and the funds which you borrow, the one million, you pay it back with a top up of 6%. This is not really a profit made by the beneficiary. This is a top-up to handle administrative costs of the program. And when you look at the beneficiaries so far, Muslims have received as much as any other Ugandan. So I, I think it's a question of how we explain this to the people of Uganda. The other argument the minister 
shadow minister for local government makes is that the special interest groups, the women, the youth, persons with disability and the elderly, are not receiving their quotas. Now, that could have begun at the beginning, but with intensive training and supervision, I want to confirm actually now, the situation is totally different. Remember, on the Parish Development Committee, there is a representative of each of these special interest groups, and they are very serious on their money. So I can see, in terms of the figures, because we have a daily tracker system. We are looking at how the money moves. We're seeing increased uptake by the women, youth, and persons with disability. And then finally, saying that PDM is a one-size-fits-all, which is a very important point because it has come up again and again that maybe we should consider different funding for parishes with bigger population, for parishes with bigger acreage. Honorable colleagues, let's, let's get to the basics. Under PDM, we are talking of 39% of the households which are still in subsistence. The parish may have a big population in terms of the size of the number of the people, but it may have a lower percentage in terms of households in subsistence. This is statistical. Now, for now, yes, I totally think that we may need to look at other parameters. Um, Honor honorable, members, honorable members, listen to the minister. If you have, if you have those uh, good ideas, that's why we have this debate. You'll be able to give those good ideas of yours to the minister so that he can be able to improve. He may not know what is in Buikwe. For him, he comes from Igara. You get it, eh? So making those comparisons. Huh? So, right, Honorable, as we move ahead, because this was the beginning, we had to start somewhere, and we use it the pro rata basis, that is the equal amount per parish. But as we go ahead, we shall have a comprehensive um, incorporating or a comprehensive formula that looks at geography, population, um, subsistence, and so on. But if for now you simply say the parishes and Kampala have big population, and yet statistically it is proven that actually most of these households are below 10% in terms of subsistence. So, yes, I agree with you. We'll have a comprehensive formula, but we had to start somewhere with a pro rata basis. So I would like to propose to my colleague, the minister, that uh, the Ubuntu local government model she's proposing needs to be designed, needs to be conceptualized, give it to us. We'll pick the positive elements in the proposal so that we enrich the PDM. But PDM is succeeding. Let us all of us support it. I think you're right on uh, and, I, I, and I think the minister, we need a continuous review on the impact that uh, PDM has created on the community. You do an assessment. Whether we are getting a positive or negative impact, we need to do a continuous one. Yes. Professor. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the committee chairperson for a good report. But I have a few observations. Uh, the chairperson proposed that we need money for the officers who would be affected by the rationalization. Uh, I wanted to know why the minister did not include this money in the current ceiling. Because if it remains in unfunded priorities, we are heading for a crisis. Or we shall be attracting supplementary budgets, which this, budget, this parliament has been discouraging. It should be in the ceiling, because this is very important. The second point is on uh, duplication of the officers who are in service but they were in a category of retired officers. If you were a vice president, but you served as a prime minister, uh, I would have expected the committee to show in the current proposals, do we have such a monies for those officers who are still in service? And a proposal that that money should go to other uh, priorities. And if the law 
bars us from doing that, then we amend the law immediately so that such a money can be utilized. I would have expected... Pro Professor, yes. if I heard it well, what uh, the chairperson said, uh, for instance, if you've been a speaker and you become a vice president, you have the double pension, which is illegal. So what you're saying, that law must be amended. You should not benefit from both offices. You should only be able to benefit from one office, whichever is the higher. That's true, but I would have expected in the current proposal, do we have a scenario where a serving officer is about to benefit from such an illegality? Now, it, is, it, it is not about they then, are benefiting. Then we should amend the law immediately so that we can save uh, such a duplication. Uh, Madam Speaker, I attended a public meeting where the, His Excellency the President said he had directed the Minister of Local Government to come up with a proposal for discussion on how we can improve the payments for the LSC1 chairpersons and other leaders. Now that the Minister is here, what is cooking in the kitchen to have uh, that proposal for discussion to remunerate LSC1 chairpersons and other leaders? Thank uh, you. Finally, finally, Prof. Finally, as a country, are we still interested in decentralization? Because a simple activity like coming up with a new bank account, you need approval from the accountant general according to the Public Finance Management Act. Are we really still interested in decentralization? We really need urgently to, um, because amending in piecemeal the PFMA and leaving critical issues which undermine decentralization, really we are not serious. We are killing decentralization. We are actually decentralizing day by day. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Daudi. Then, uh, Dr. Chut. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. And I want to thank the Chair of the Committee and the members for the good report. Right Honorable Speaker, I was reading on the 14th of November, 2023, Honorable Majesi, I am now on the issue with the new the five remaining cities. Honorable Rafael Majesi said I am reading an article said the <coughs> the fate of the five new cities remain unclear after a decision of court that was delivered three years ago. Mr. Majesi said, it be, Honorable Majesi said, it is because of this ruling we don't operationalize new units in the middle of the term. He said, it's not about money, but it's about the law. The same Honorable Majesi was heard today requesting for some money to start the process of operationalizing the new cities. But also, right when I was speaker, uh, yes, the Masaka High, High Court judge, Mr. Moses Kaumikaziwe, on October 27, 2020, agreed with the petitioners and ruled that the Local Government Act empowers the Local Government Minister to issue guidelines on matters in his jurisdiction through a statutory instrument and not by pronouncements delivered at a press conference. As a consequence, Mr. Majesi, Honorable Majesi, indicated the five new cities remain on hold. The minister did not respond to questions about whether he would be issuing the necessary instrument giving effect to the five urban units following the court decision. Now, the clarification I'm seeking from you, right, Honorable Speaker, 
is whether Honorable Magjezi has tabled the, the statutory instrument and the guidelines before this house, before he promises those cities to begin in 2025. I beg to submit. I thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, and uh, thanks, Honorable Kavanda, for those observations. It's not speculation, these are observations. Right Honorable, um, first of all, what did the court rule um, in the case quoted? And good enough, our ministers is uh, one of us who actually took government court, the Honorable Quizera. Yes, and the court ruled in his favor to the effect that government should not start new administrative units mid-term. And if you have listened carefully to the chairman's report, the request is not to start cities now. This report was to request for one billion for preparatory activities. And I thought I said, in line with that, these cities are not starting now. We do not present a budget a pre for the new cities. Preparatory activities do not lead to the start of. Doesn't it lead to the start of? Right, Honorable Speaker, the preparatory activities I'm talking about, studies by the Ministry in terms of the boundaries, the, the revenue capacities, and so on. For the administrative units, which were already created. And remember, we're talking of, we, we need to separate these two terms. Court said, don't create new administrative units mid-term. These five cities were already created. It's now the mandate of Parliament to pronounce itself and say, I think we need to, um, to re revert or reverse the other resolution. But what I'm requesting for now right, speaker. is there's a clarification from Some the clarification. chief petitioner. Just let me finish this Some one. I don't want to forget it. I, I will give you. Yeah, just, just give me one minute, I, I finish this one. Because he raises a, an important matter. The statutory instrument on the new cities. Right, Honorable Speaker, the five cities were already approved and gazetted by Parliament. C can I hear from the Attorney General? Why are you struggling when there is a legal advisor? Uh, you're welcome, thank you. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. There are two cases. One of which court ruled that uh, the Minister of Local Government must table the statutory instrument instead of issuing guidelines in the media. But prior to that, there had been a ruling in the case filed by Honorable Quizera. And the court was very specific. It did not say you do not start administrative units in the middle of the political term. It's, it said you do not hold elections for the elective positions that come as a result of the creation of those administrative units. Because what is envisaged in the Constitution is either a by-election or a general election. The question was, when you create Chegegua City, <laughs> I have forgiven my friend. When you create Chegegua City and you want to hold elections 
in 2025. The issue is, is that a general election or a by-election? So in answering that, court said we cannot hold elections to fill political positions that arise as a result of the creation of new administrative units. Those elections must await a general election because that is what is envisaged in the constitution. Either a general election or a by-election. So if the administrative unit is to start in 2025, what would happen would be administrative uh, structures. The budgeting and movement and this and that would be for administrative structures. But the actual election must await the general election to fill the elective positions. I beg to submit. Uh, and the regulations? Oh, oh. Were the regulations late? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. This parliament made the law actually actualize that similar decision by amending the Local Government Act, and now it is part of our law that you cannot, I think that's what the Attorney General was, uh, was shy to say it. So it's a, a question of law now. Even just starting with the administrative aspect, if the moment you mention budgeting, you cannot do budgeting without political oversight. So it is a law, and I think that uh, we, we need to just embrace it or refresh our minds that uh, when we're passing these electoral reforms with the Honorable Mpuga Matthias, my good friend, and uh, many of you who were privileged to be in the last parliament with the right Honorable Speaker, and many of us, we passed that here during the electoral reforms, and it is now part of our legislative framework. Uh, uh, have you concluded? <laughs> <laughs> Honorable both of both, have you concluded? No, I, I thought I was speaking to lawmakers. No, but, but you need and, to uh, conclude. The, the conclusion is that we have a law. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least you've done it. <laughs> right, yes, Honorable uh, Speaker, the Honorable OO is right. The Remember, guidelines, no, the guidelines that was how you were supposed to lay on the table. Did you put the, bring the, the guidelines? I hope, right, Honorable, the members will re recall when I actually brought a regulation here, a draft regulation. The, and the, the guidance we got from Attorney General was that the Local Government Act was adequate except in areas where we may need amendment, which we shall do. But right now what we need is the one billion for preparatory activities leading towards the cities in 2026 January. Is it a priority? That's for Parliament, right, Honorable? <laughs> yeah. Achu, Dr. Achut. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and I want to thank the committee for the report. I just want to seek some clarification from the Minister of Public Service uh, on the 74 billion that is unfunded to provide for the RAPEX expenditure. When we had the RARE being transferred to the Ministry of Energy and also Ministry of Science and Technology, there were a number of staff who were to be transferred to other facilities. And now it has taken almost why, more than... Why don't you bring that under energy? Bring that under energy of rare. You speak about the, the, the ones that are going to be... Yes, so the ones that are uh, in, within the uh, savings... Under local government. Yes, under the savings of the build, they are provided for some who are going to be paid their terminal benefits, 
but there's also a second category that those will be absorbed or transferred to other ministries. However, I have not seen that being provided within the budget. And that's going to create a challenge because if it goes beyond this financial year, then they're going to have the same issues we had before of salaries in arrears. Secondly, I'll want the Minister of Local Government may, to clarify. May, may, maybe to all the ministers, all the entities that are going to be merged, where there's going to, to uh, where we are going to have RAPEX, we must make a provision for payment of people how to are going, who are not going to be absorbed. All that must be provided for. It's really a priority. Yes. Yeah. And right, Honourable Speaker, the issue also was on the salaries for those who are going to be absorbed. Because the challenge last time is the agency would have been disbanded, but the people are hanging in the air and they have not been absorbed. And the issues of salary arrears comes up. Secondly, to the Minister of Local Government, we want to know whether the LC1 elections are going to be held because we extended their term, but have not had much information about that. And lastly, on the, the issue... The, the LC1 elections, we shall still extend them. That's not a priority. We will, then, we will extend them. Then, right on, the lastly, is on the issue of the Kampala Metropolitan. I want to understand, in light of the five new cities you've talked about, uh, specifically Wakiso, we know that there's the Ministry of Kampala City, Capital City Authority, and Metropolitan Affairs, which also includes Wakiso. So I wanted to know whether the Metropolitan is under a statutory instrument, or whether they're going to coexist with Wakiso City, or whether one will supersede the other. Thank you. And then Tebe too. Thank you. Oh God. Uh -uh. Santa, <laughs> then a joke. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the committee for the good report. However, in one of the pages, uh, the chairperson read that um, there could be funding to be allocated for sub-counties which were relocated due to the coming of the cities and the town council. But I wanted to bring to their attention and the attention of the minister that it was not only the sub-counties which were relocated due to the coming of the sub-counties. We have got many sub-counties which were created from the mother sub-counties which are operating under trees, some of them operating in kiosk. So I would wish to think that they should incorporate and add them so that they, they, they should also get the development fund. The second issue is that I wanted to find out from the uh, minister. Honorable court, actually some of them are even studying under verandas. I mean they are working under the verandas. Thank those, you. Those sub-counties. Thank like where a county was separated from another county, yes. you find they have no office. So that is a very serious matter. Yes, uh, right, right, Honorable Speaker. In my Aru North, I have got about five uh, sub counties which are operating under trees. We have Bongtiko, Achulibu, Paiwula, Porogali, and Ajan. Uh, leave alone that one. They, these sub counties also don't get community access road fund. To, 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 to help them uh, repair the sub-county roads. So you find that they are just left outside. That means the districts should use the fund which they have to develop those sub-county uh, roads. The second thing I wanted the minister to take note of that, district service commissions in all districts, maybe not only mine, they always recruit these staffs, but they leave them on acting positions and moreover very key offices like human resource, DHO office and the uh, uh, education department. This makes the work not uh, move on uh, uh, properly. Finally, my uh, right honorable speaker and the minister, in future we need to begin thinking about the women council. 
as we recognize the LC ones and give them ex gratia, the women councils keep on asking us because they are supposed to move those those chairperson women council in sub counties. They don't have bicycles. They don't have motorcycles. As we consider LCs, we need to begin thinking about them so that they get some small ex gratia so that they can move around and help the women in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, on, on a case, I hope you, where do the VHTs belong? Health. Because the VHTs also need to be supported with the bicycles. Ojok. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to thank the chairman of the committee for the report. I have three observations, uh, Madam Speaker. One, on the issue of excretion, I want to appreciate the committee for the proposal, especially around the areas but also even for what has been planned in the, in the IPF, for example, in Omoro, there's a shortage. In the previous years, they gave 172 million, but in this year, they're giving 44 million. I'd like them to just take note of that because there's some errors that, that keep cropping up. Secondly, on the issue of the road fund under community access roads, I'd like to request, because the last time we raised this issue about new administrative units, it was an issue of coding. I want to hope that the Minister of Finance has completed the issue of coding of those new administrative units so that they can also get funding. But also there are some old sub-counties like Ongaro and Koro that have not been receiving uh, the car funds for the last two financial years. Thirdly, Madam Speaker, the issue of transitional grant, it is very discretionary. May I propose that we have a definite figure per year for these new administrative units. We know that for every sub-county or for every district, Per year, we have this particular amount. It could be 500 million until those units are up and running. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. When, when we are looking at this, I, I, let's not personalize to constituencies, to districts. Let it be general that the LOC ones, their contracts, will be renewed in 2026. Uh, you, you get it, eh? So let us not be only the ones of Bukede or whichever. A chain. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to appreciate the detailed report from the committee chairperson and also some very critical aspects which are positive from the alternative report from the shadow minister. I want to bring to the attention of the minister that whereas we know that the PDM is doing well and we have uh, very good hopes that it will be a game changer, there are some aspects when we don't look at them critically. For example, when we say that money goes direct up to the circles, but we also know that we have information which has already indicated that sometimes money under the Wendy are going direct to, to personal accounts up to tunes of 100 million, which is not um, the circle's account. And that can be quite risky. And even when we are already praising the 98% in terms of disbursement. But you know, as women, before when we were looking at UWEP, when we were praising that performance was going up to beyond 90%. For example, when we visited some districts in northern Uganda, like Agago, at 93%, that was already based on the recovery rate. So when we already begin to say that we are performing at 98%, I think that gives us uh, a leeway to, to, to just sit back and be laid back when we still don't know how the fund is Mamawi. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to thank the committee for the report. Uh, aware that the committee bring out the issue of a monument for the local government leaders, Right Honourable Speaker, one of the biggest challenges we have is uh, we have the sub county vice chairpersons, and their roles are very clear. In the absence of the chairperson, the takes over. And in the event where the uncertainties of death uh, uh, rises, 
the vice chairperson acts as a chairperson of the Sabo County and is not entitled to any salary where the chairperson has been getting. And this is one of the challenges we are facing at Sabo County level. Right on the speaker, my request is the committee take interest that if the law can be amended to, to cater for such, we shall be glad. But right on the speaker, I got an opportunity to move into some of these cities like Port, Port Barara and Masak. Oh, court. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I thank the committee for the good report. I just have one uh, observation which I would need clarification from the Minister for Public Service. In the report, there is um, where the Public Service Commission is requesting for some amount of money to put up a commission's house. But we also know that government is coming up with a campus in Webaja, whereby all the ministry and agencies will be housed. Will that not be a duplication or the commission will, um, or government is putting that one for only ministries and leaving out the agencies? Secondly, I support um, the committee's uh, recommendation for vehicles for the political leaders. Right Honorable Speaker, is a big challenge in many districts where chairpersons do not have vehicles and they end up picking vehicles from the sectors. And you find that the technical staff are left with nothing to do supervision and to carry on their work. So I support the, uh, the, the recommendation that uh, political leaders are given uh, their procured uh, vehicles. Finally, on PDM, right honorable speaker, under PDM, I think a lot of emphasis were put. Dr. Lolme. Thank you very much, Regional Speaker, and thank the committee for the report. Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to bring it to the attention of Parliament that we do not know the exact number of parishes that we have, let alone their names. How does I know yourself or the or executive? And I'm very serious about this one. Right, Honorable Speaker. No, I am saying, Honorable <laughs> Minister of Local Government is here. He is in charge of local government. As he said, he doesn't know. Right Honourable Speaker. Just a minute. Um, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. We have 10,594 parishes. And I have a compendium of all local government administrative units, which I can lay on table even this week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. I now know that he has that compendium. But my consultations have, had not met people who were wiser than that. Now that we know that there is such a compendium, we would like to own it by having it laid on table. Why I'm yeah. saying this, right we Honourable have, Speaker? We have a copy in the library. You know, the unfortunate bit we have with our members, like Dr. Lulume. After here, he dashes to the hospital. He doesn't go to the library to, to research on what to say next. Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker. This matter is a serious matter because I read a lot of books no, in the we library. Have, we have it in the library. Thank you very much. I will check for it. But what I wanted to bring to the attention of Parliament too is that if you gloss over the numbers and the names of such administrative units where expenditure is made, you can also be likely to get ghost parishes. And I wanted this parliament to take this seriously. Secondly, the, the Honorable Minister talked about a new formula of which timeline has not been given. We brought this matter to the attention of the Minister. Even when he came to Uyikwe South constituency, I brought it to his attention. Because when we are talking about population, versus allocation. It means inequity for those overpopulated areas with poor people, yet 
there are certain administrative units with fewer people who are much box uh, thank you very much right honorable speaker uh, I want to thank the the chair for that wonderful report however I have two concerns right honorable speaker right honorable speaker about the road units indeed the newly created cities have been having challenges with these road units we need to open up roads our cities are still looking like how it, they were when they were still districts but right honorable speaker i if you have not forgotten the last uh, in the last uh, financial year i remember we passed money here money for uh, the road units and even the minister himself uh, of works stated here that there were procurements ongoing for purchasing for for these road units but he said 80 percent has been achieved remaining only 20 percent but I, today I, I want you to keep that question for infrastructure okay because that was brought in infrastructure that the money for road units was available and the procurement had started we need to find out that where has it reached if it started where has it reached okay thank you right honorable speaker uh, on the issue of the office space, indeed, right honorable speaker, we have been coexisting with our mother districts. Like for some, most of these newly created cities, you know, the mother districts are still operating. Their offices are still within the, uh, within the vicinity of uh, the newly elected, uh, the newly uh, created cities. Now, a rural city has newly uh, recruited staffs that needed space. And now, the mother district, the staffs are all in a rural city. And now we have staffs who are meandering around. We do not know where to put them. So, right, Honorable Speaker, when the, com com uh, when the committee stated that we need money for office space, in fact, for me, it was, it was very great. I, I was very grateful because... It's actually a priority, uh, Honorable Minister. Nathan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mine, I wish to appreciate the PDM. At my age, I had never heard of a trillion going to the, the villages. It's a very big achievement, and what we should do is to nurse this baby, a partnership with the Minister of Local Government, so that the money can reach each and every person. When he talks of the size of the, of the parishes, I agree, some are bigger than others. That's why I would think that much as he wants money to, to administrate for the cities, it's also good to know about our districts. There are bigger districts like Tororo, Kasese, Ntungamo, and Sinjiro. If the minister could have his technical people to go and see those districts, rather than people coming here in the, on the floor, I am forming this district. And we don't have, we're not very informed. Two, about public service. It's unfortunate that the committee has said that 76 billion is required for what? For RAPEX. When we met the Ministry of Works, he said he wanted 174 billion for UNRWA. Only. Only UNRWA 174. So this thing you are taking in one of the Which one are the one which is going to be repealed? Yes, when the, when they came, when they came to the committee minister was asked, how much would you need to pay off those people and continue with the business of UNRWA as a department? He said 174 billion. But UNRWA was talking of 202 billion. So the figure of 76 is just a pure eye. A pure eye to make these people, young people and men, to serve on the street. I would want people to do some bit of logistical and scientific study before they do something. We are going in this one, yet without well-informed information. I don't see why we should continue as if we are never going we went to school. We went to school. We are all knowledgeable people. Why should we take policies that cannot work? Madam Speaker, we have continued on this issue of rationalization, but we have also done a good homework. We would want to see that if you are taking the coffee, Somewhere we should see a department where it can fit and we continue having a first class coffee in, in, on the world market. But that's not, it's not there. 
people who have not been able to control their foot and mouth. Honorable members, honorable members, the aspect of rationalization is one. This house is the one that made, that passed the bills which became acts that created these institutions. It is still this house, either to accept or reject. It is this house to, uh, to accept or reject. But you can also not keep an institution that is only taking in money. You should be able to keep an institution that makes money for the country. Now, for instance, if you have an institution that is making funds for, for the country, why should you rationalize? But if you have a liability where you are continuing to pay people every day, you are sinking money on a daily basis, why shouldn't you? Most of Brajit, Madam Speaker, I agree with you about it, but I would have wanted a scientific study to inform this house. And I am happy you are the one who chaired the committee of that but rationalization. My, but my report was ignored. By who? By Minister Mururu Mukasa. Is that Because we never debated it. No. I stand to you, Madam Speaker. No. For the clarification, Madam Speaker. Nobody ignored it. That is a report of Parliament of Uganda, not your personal. Madam Speaker, just a small. Mr. Madam Speaker, I'm happy that Nathan is, ra Honorable Nathan is raising this issue of rationalization. But he should also look at the genesis, how they came up. I just want to ask a question. I am an engineer in the Ministry of Works. I am getting 800,000. You, you are an engineer in Ruafu, and you are getting 10 million. And I was more brighter than you in class. Is that rational? <laughs> Madam Speaker, we should not leave institutions which are killing ministries. Madam Speaker, I think for the first time, this, when we were forming these things, I was here, I was telling them, tomorrow it's going to be a monster. Let me give an example of UNRWA. It started as Ruafu. First of all, it started as an agency because they wanted to manage money from donors that it should not go in the ministries. Then after that, from Rafu, they said we make an authority. They have been making a road in Garuga there, UNRWA. It has failed up to now. This is just a procurement entity. Yeah, we money. have shifted to so, RAPEX. So, Madam Speaker, these are people have we, who Have we shifted to RAPEX? <laughs> uh, I, call, uh, I call is... <laughs> Right, right on about, I don't even see the chairman, but I, but I think, uh, oh, he was seated here. Chairman presented a very good report that everybody has appreciated him. And I've been, you know, attentively listening to members. I know this report is going to the budget committee. Again, the same report is coming back from the budget committee on the, the floor of parliament again for a discussion. I wish we reduce the discussion and then we move to a, uh, another entity. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Thank you, thank you so much, honorable members. What I saw pertinent in this report is an aspect of duplication on the issue of pension. You should be able to get pension from one entity other than getting pension from uh, several offices when it comes to. Uh, uh, and then when we look at all what, what, what is happening, Honorable Minister, you've had the issue of offices are very important for this, for this newly created uh, administrative units, the ministries. We need to look at all of that. And as we said before, we are going to send this to the Committee of Budget for harmonization, reconciliation in the committee, and the chairperson still will follow it up to the committee. I now put a question that the report of the Committee of Public Service and Local Government on Ministerial Policy Statement and Budget est Estimates for Financial Year 2024-2025 be adopted by this honorable house. Those in favor say on the contrary, eh? Aye. The eyes have it. The Committee Thank on Foreign you. Affairs.
And, and Honorable Magesi, I don't want you to take these things simply. They are very serious. Actually, this is a very, very good report. It informs you of what is in your ministry. Madam Speaker, thank you. The point I wanted to make, Madam Speaker, is for the Committee of Budget. Once Parliament has ac uh, accepted and adopted the recommendations, it becomes now the res resolutions of the House. A Committee of Budget cannot again sit and censor what we have already passed here. Their work is just to, to, to sieve and put together not to go there and start again subjecting the chairperson or the minister. Because we have been doing this in the past. And I wanted you, Madam Speaker, to emphasize it so that the Committee of Budget does not drag us backwards. Thank but you. of course, the Committee of Budget works within the resource envelope that they have. We, we have no problem with them working in the, in the resource envelope. But they should not go and start doing their own adjustments as if they are the house. This Committee uh, of Budget on, should really... Honorable members... Uh, Huh? This reports, <laughs> These reports, honorable wrong. members. But Madam Speaker, just final one. Honorable members, yes. these reports are going to the Committee of Budget for harmonization, reconciliation, and consolidation based on other factors. So, <laughs> why are you against Mudimi? Honorable Nathan. Madam, Madam Speaker, just a small one. Uh, so, uh, just, just a quick one. Just, Madam Speaker, Mr. Minister of uh, local government, the reason why there is poor performance in local government is councillors are underpaid or nothing. Now, instead of doing the work, they want to go maybe if a contract of the road also pick money so that they are able to satisfy yourself. I would propose this thing of saying 25, 26 is too far. If we want performance in local government, the parliament here should really appropriate money to deal with local governments so that these councillors, uh, chairpersons, are really paid something other than not doing it. Here we have honorable number chair, or the LOC5 chairman. Because he saw no money, he went and stood and became a member of parliament. So uh, uh, the chairman of the committee, honorable Mapendusi, was a chairman for 15 years. Yes, but Madam Speaker, that's what we're saying. The earlier we do this, the better. You see, 2025, 20, 2026, you are, you, are, you are deferring development in an area. They will want to avoid the councillors to eat roads, hospitals, schools, and they do their work so that the monitoring can be improved. Let us make some appropriation. We give them money, and I can tell you, if we give them money, you're going to see service delivery in local government. Um, right, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Nandala raises a very pertinent issue. And uh, it's good for members of parliament to see what have we put as a proposal. Colleagues, as we stand today, the chairperson LOC1 is paid 10,000 shillings per month. Yes. yes. How? That's the right question, but that is the reality. And it is so little that we can't pay it every month, so we pay it annually, 120,000. It makes it look something, but that's it is. That's how, we, how it is. The chair personnel will see to the same 10,000. The councillor, the councillor at the sub county gets 35,000 shillings. Procedure. The chair personnel will see Procedure. three. Procedure. Colleagues, the chair person, no, the, the per month. Procedure. The chair personnel will see three. Gets Procedure. But this is for the Procedure. information of members. It's the procedure. Procedure. Honor, honorable members, honorable members, first of all, you don't switch on a microphone and you say proceed here. That's number one. Number two, these members of parliament are wondering when they go to constituencies, they see all the councillors coming to them. They see all the LOCs coming to them. They see everybody coming to them. And they are asking, what is the question? How best can we solve that problem? I think you're right, Honorable Speaker. Colleagues, let's have this information so that as you meet these councillors, 
And they cried before, I have never been before chairperson of a district shedding tears. The chairperson of a sub-county or town council, LOC3, is paid 380,000 shillings and is supposed to be full-time. The council at the district is paid 175,000 shillings. Remember, colleagues, these members also go for campaigns like us. The chairperson of a district is paid 1.7 million shillings. The chairperson of an entire district. So what are we proposing, right on? And that's the figure you saw the committee putting in the report. And I thank you that you have approved this report. We're saying if we increase the chairperson LC1 and 2 from 10,000 to at least 50,000 per month, if we increased the rest, the LOC3, LOC5, by 100 percent, that is the 378 billion in total, including what was already being paid, that we are asking for. And I think the members are, are making a good point. If the parliament has approved this, let nobody tamper with this one. I thank you, honorable colleagues. There's a procedure matter. Thank you, right honorable. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, we are in a very critical situation. And right honorable speaker, my procedure issue would be every issue finds itself in your office. All these people complaining, all these councillors suffering, everybody will be running to your office. And when we are processing this budget, right, in, speaker, including all the members, they come running <laughs> donation, donation, donation. <laughs> eh? huh? So why don't we solve a problem once for all? So, right, Honorable Speaker, I would request if it's in your mandate, before we finalize the budget, maybe you hold a very serious meeting with the ministers together and the chairpersons of these committees. You dedicate time and you get some of these issues because some chairpersons would wish to have some issues sorted, but the means of finance will be a distance and the means of local government will be the other side. If you could hold them together, have a, a thorough discussion so that by the time we have the budget processed, we have a final position. But all the, me, all the chairpersons of committees are ex-officials of uh, the budget committee. My work is to sit there and supply. I don't want to be seen to interfere with the budget. But all what has been said should be captured, must be considered. So maybe, maybe last uh, right honorable speaker, just Some to speaker, harmonize. These are your committees. You cannot allow them to go do things of what we have agreed here. Madam Speaker, if your committee is not doing what you is supposed to be done as pro approved, it will be a dangerous committee. Madam, we'll speaker, handle them. Yeah, Madam Speaker, we want to plead with you. Don't leave here that you are presiding officer. Every committee, you are supposed to be the chair, but because you don't have authority to be there, no or time, that's why they choose uh, Quezera to be the what? The chair. And he's working on your behalf. Honorable and members, hmm? honorable members, can we agree, agree on one thing? Before we do the supply, we'll have a meeting with all the chairs in a boardroom. With the Minister of Finance, with the PSST, with relevant ministers of those committees, and, and, uh, and the accountants. Is that okay? Yes. Right now, Speaker, thank you very much. Right now, Speaker, I have tried to read the, the total number. Members, whether you talk for how long, we are going to the next committee, the next uh, sector. I have got. And, on, and, and from Thursday, we shall be sitting from 10. The total estimates in the policy huh? statement and the appropriation bill have a variation. So if we approve and adopt these reports of about 60 trillion, yet the appropriation bill is talking about 58 trillion. Yesterday a corrigenda was issued. 
Well, isn't it procedurally be right for the Minister of Finance to provide some guidance? Because there are three conflicting figures presented to the House. I thank you. Honorable, Honorable Quizera, Eddie. That's why I said at the beginning that this is going for harmonization, reconciliation, and consolidation. In the process of harmonizing, that's when you will come with the one uniform figure. Foreign Affairs. Uh, Chair, local government and the minister, thank you so much for that elaborate report. We want to thank you so, so much. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity uh, to present uh, the report on the Committee on Foreign Affairs on the policy statements for vote 006 for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and votes 501 to votes 538, Uganda Missions Abroad for Financial 2024-2025. Dr. Honorable Speaker, I'm going to strictly get, take your guidance on really coming up with a summary. But however, I want also to uh, let you know that we are able to comply with the, your guidance. Uh, we held Zoom meetings with the missions and uh, we hold also physical meetings with some of the heads of missions and foreign service staff. We went ahead and scrutinized the alternative policy statements on the foreign. UBC, inspiring Uganda. za maji wa UBC TV ifuatayo ni taarifa ya habari na tunatangaza moja kwa moja kutoka mjini Kampala naitwa Bella Masangano katika habari ya kwanza ni kwamba mkuu wa kitengo cha ulinzi wa samaki katika jeshi la UPDF Luteni Kanali Masi Tukahirwa amefanya operesheni katika ziwa Choga kubaini kiwango cha utiifu wa maagizo yaliyotolewa kwa wavuvi wa eneo hilo dhidi ya uvuvi haramu mbali na kufanya operation hiyo Bitu Kahirwa aliendesha hamasa dhidi ya uvuvi haramu akiwa katika mwalo wa ziwa hilo ambapo pia alinasa nyavu mbovu zinazotumika na wavuvi haramu na operation hiyo imefanyika baada ya ongezeko la migogoro kati ya jamii ya wavuvi na vikosi vya ulinzi wa samaki kutoka UPDF ziara ya Bitu Kahirwa katika Ziwa Choga imetumika pia kama fursa kwa wavuvi kutoa malalamiko yao na kutafutia suluhu changamoto hizo mbali na hivyo luteni kanali Masi Tukahirwa aliendesha doria za usiku kama hatua ya kutatua baadhi ya malalamiko ambapo mwishowe kuna baadhi ya wavuvi haramu waliokamatwa kuna dhamira ya kuimarisha juhudi za uhamasishaji jamii ili kukuza shughuli za uvuvi halali na wendelevu na kuwalinda samaki wachanga
utawala wa UBC umetambulisha mipango ya miaka mitatu ijayo kwa bodi ya wakurugenzi. Maswala makuu yatakayo kuwa yatakao kipaumbele ni vipindi vya maendeleo ya taifa, utalii wa nchi na maswala mengine muhimu ya taifa. Umanyi MPP siri ya ya e promote zenyo program jiweta digital transformation. Kakiovola weno plan. Bagita demo huuntu nyo huo ebiyo nyo ebiyo kola ngavira ebikola e, digital transformation. Okufuna ebiyo nyo ebiyo omulembe. Omulembe kwa teknolojia. Ama ntupa uliza tebachia uliza nyo neba teka kusimu neba uliza. Neba teka ku, 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 ku YouTube neba uliza. So plan ene geze huo kubiku wata nyo. Tulimukulaba, fenga UBC, tugeenda kukola chi, e chenja uru, e chigeenda ukutumbula e, umutindu kwa fe, mkubwa uweleza amaulide, mkubwa uweleza ebifa mguanga, ne mkubwa uweleza programu za government, tuziba tusiza kutukia. So, che tulimukati, either tu, tu ne, ne board of directors, e, ne management, tu vijisemu, either binji bietula vye, tugeenda ukubanga, tu nonya, Sente okuva mu ba mba ba na makole do abala abati ya kwa bolango ni mu government hii ni ni kufati ya mgomo wajana ambapo wafanya biashara wakati kati ya mji wa Kampala waliyafunga maduka yao wakipinga tozo kubwa za kodi baadhi yao wamesitisha mgomo huo chini ya muungano wao wa futa na wengine wamekataa kusitisha hadi pale ambapo malalamiko yao yatatatuliwa na ambapo pia mamlaka ya mapato nchini itakapoondoa mfumo wa kuendesha biashara wa EFRIS Don't, we don't we don't get much on what we sell but they are giving us much taxes that we don't understand so we have opened today because yesterday we did what we wanted as the traders in Chikuvo and today we, we have decided to open because tomorrow we are having ED and fitting so after ED or another day we can decide on Friday or our next Monday to do what we did yesterday so are you broadcasting what had happened yesterday in the area just because it was different from the usual days, uh, we got some, some, some government officials who called us, who called the FUTA leaders and tried to discuss with us what, what was happening. So we tried to explain to them. When we explained, these people told us there are some issues they have not been knowing about. They told us to pull down our people so that they, they can at least is on the, on, the, on the issue which was happening yesterday so that we meet the president. <laughs>
mkuu wa kitengo cha ulinzi wa samaki katika jeshi la UPDF Luteni Kanali Messi Tukahira amefanya operesheni katika Ziwa Choga kubaini kiwango cha utiifu wa maagizo yaliyotolewa kwa wavuvi wa eneo hilo dhidi ya uvuvi haramu. Mbali na kufanya operesheni hiyo, Bitukahira aliendesha hamasa dhidi ya uvuvi haramu akiwa katika mwalo wa Ziwa Hilo ambapo pia alinasa nyavu mbovu zinazotumika na wavuvi haramu. Operation hiyo imefanyika baada ya ongezeko la migogoro kati ya jamii ya wavuvi na vikosi vya ulinzi wa samaki kutoka UPDF. Ziara ya Bitu Kahira katika Ziwa Choga imetumika pia kama fursa kwa wavuvi kutoa malalamiko yao na kutafutia suluhu changamoto hizo. Mbali na hivyo, Luteni Kanali Tukahira aliendesha doria za usiku kama hatua ya kutatua baadhi ya malalamiko ambapo mwishowe kuna baadhi ya wavuvi haramu waliokamatwa kuna dhamira ya kuimarisha juhudi za uhamasishaji jamii kukuza shughuli za uvuvi halali na endelevu na kuwalinda samaki wachanga
kama wewe natembea kwa district yote wewe utapata kayunga je wiki na bodi mingi iko na katimba ndani kama kitu hizi kamada yetu walikaa walimaliza mambo hiyo sitakuwa mzuri sitalipa watoto yetu kwa shule sitalipa lansi ya bodi na na government nataka kitu mimi nauma sisi nyo 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 na yeye kamanda yetu yote tano mnapatia sisi kamanda mzuri kayunga district Wanachama wa UPC wakiwa chini ya uongozi wa rais wao Jimmy Akena wametoa msaada wa vyakula kwa ajili ya kusherekea siku kuu ya Eid al kesho kwa Waislamu wa eneo la Naguru. Miongoni mwa vyakula vilivyotolewa ni kama sukari, mafuta ya kula pamoja na mahitaji mengine ya kila siku kama sabuni. Jimmy Akena amewahimiza wananchi kwa ujumla kuwa wamoja. Na hivi sasa mtazamaji tupate mapumziko machache kutoka studio. na kiongozi wa upinzani bungeni Joel Senyonyi ametoa wito kwa mamlaka ya mapato nchini URA kuendelea kusikiliza malalamiko ya wafanyabiashara na kutafuta suluhu hasa kuhusu swala la tozo kubwa la kodi alitoa kauli hiyo baada ya kupokea barua ya malalamiko kutoka muungano wa wafanyabiashara wa Kampala Kasita ambapo amependekeza kuondolewa kwa mfumo wa uendeshaji biashara wa EFRIS ametaka mfumo huo kuwekwa katika mpangilio wa kueleweka kwanza na hamasa ifanyike kwanza akiwasilisha barua hiyo kwa kiongozi wa upinzani bungeni mwenyekiti wa muungano huo Dr. Musoke Tedias anasema sio haki kwa mamlaka ya mapato nchini kuendelea kutambulisha mifumo ya kielektroniki kwa wafanyabiashara bila kuhamasisha na kuwafunza kwanza kuhusu ukumbatiaji wa teknolojia mbalimbali Mwakilishi mwingine kutoka muungano wa Kasita Mukasa Joseph amearifu kwamba iwapo hatua yoyote haitachukuliwa ya kusitisha mfumo wa EFRIS kwa muda basi watarajie kuporomoka kwa biashara nyingi kipindi hiki ambapo mchanganyiko michanganyiko ya teknolojia mbalimbali mbali, inaibuka kila uchao na kushika kasi nchini Joel Senyonyi ameahidi kulifikisha swala hilo bungeni kujadiliwa kusaidia wafanyabiashara kutafutiwa suluhu wafanyabiashara hao wamelalamikia pia swala la wageni raia wa China kuruhusiwa kuuza bidhaa sawa na zao katika eneo limoja kitendo ambacho wanadai kinapunguza thamani ya bidhaa zao wakati wa china wanakuja nchini wakiwa kama wawekezaji na sio wafanyabiashara wa kawaida Na huo ndo mwisho wa taarifa hii ya habari kutoka hapa UBC TV. Asante kwa kutizama. UBC inspiring Uganda
This Week on UBC. There was this one time we got lost. <laughs> <laughs> First, now so, tell us that story <laughs> of getting lost. So when we get to, I don't even know where we got lost from, mm. but there was a point where we got to and we separated. Mm. So I remained with one of my friends mm. and the three also went somewhere else. Yes. And I think it seems they're the ones who knew where we were going. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> we started looking for the taxi see the new tax park vanaye <laughs> it was a hassle like for for how many hours i think it was an hour or so mm. but finally we asked mm. someone and mm. it, i think we were just uh, going around it or mm. something mm. because we saw at some point we went into the bus park but then <laughs> the person i was with had a sister and they had to go together so we had to locate them so it was a hassle but mm. uh, it was an adventure. And, and how was the experience of being in university, in Bugema University, near Makerere University? Mm, yeah, they mm. normally passed by and they were like, high school, this high school, the Makerere <laughs> students. <laughs> One of the ladies who has done something exceptional that I think it's worth sharing with the sisters out there and also the brothers who are watching. I came across avocado oil mm. and that is something I picked interest in. I realized that there, we had so many avocado trees, but oh. they were not like being productive. So when I looked at them, I, I remembered the things I was reading about and I said, can I make something out of it? So that is uh, how I started making avocado oil. A new dawn on Behind the Headlines with me, Timothy Nyangweso, every Wednesday live in our studios in the heart of Kampala, we have conversations that have analysis, explanation, but not every truth is fact, and not every fact is truth. Every Wednesday, 10 p.m. on your public broadcaster. All on your public broadcaster, UBC, inspiring Uganda. Did you know that our number one value as a nation is to respect and protect the environment? With the current population increase of Uganda and industrialization, this has increased pressure on the natural resources, resulting into environmental degradation and global warming. Developing countries like Uganda could face 80% of the global climate change effects by the year 2030 if no action is taken. Join us here on UBC TV, Inspiring Uganda, on our Echo Plus program, where we bring you an in-depth analysis of issues that are disastrous to our environment. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., only on your loved station, The National Broadcaster. I'm Kaylee with the Very Special Weather Report. From up there to down here, everything is crazy. If we don't listen to scientists, things are going to be even crazier when I grow up. Let's look at the forecast for 2050. Heat waves will affect 94% of children, making playing outside a thing of the past. Extreme droughts will wipe out wheat crops, killing the one food my brother eats, bread. Disasters will cost taxpayers almost $6 trillion. My parents hate taxes. Of course, all of this is caused by a blanket of heat trapping pollution in the atmosphere that we could just like, not put up there? But don't worry, there's still a chance of clear skies. Right now, clean energy systems are moving in from the east to the west, creating tons of coal jobs. And solar prices have dropped lower than oil and gas. Going to the satellite, it looks like a high-pressure system of grown-ups could still move in and protect kids from an avalanche of really bad stuff. Some gusty political winds ahead, but they're no match for the power of Hurricane Felicia. That's my mom. We'll keep you posted as we track if adults stop wasting time and fix this totally solvable problem. Because it's not just a weather report to us, it's our future.
Parliament yata dewo buchiko bubiri buno nyeleze kuhunkola ya URA e, e, ya IFRIS Abasu buzi wa doki dewa lopo kuwa okuba ya mbo kugonjola Biba tategera mungkola ya IFRIS Songa basiramu wa suzebuli ndara Okusala idi olunaku oluencha Abaduka nya UBC banjuli dolu chiko lufuzi Enteka teka eye miyake satu Nguaniliza ku UBC TV Ama ulire UBC lero Na kuzo muwezi tuwala muenda Muwezi tumugua apuli omuaka bili abili muena Ze Jethro Kasaiji na Yusuf Senyomo uh, Kuruaba na fea wako ze sa olimi obonero Yubisi lero etandi sebuete Speaker wa Parliament Anita Aneta Monga Tade obu chiko bubiri uh, Bunu njeleze kukula ya IFRIS Ya tongo ze wa chitongo le chuozo msoro Chi Uganda Revenue Authority URA e, Ya vidi deko wa subu zokuwe karakasa Ni batu ukano kugala wa maduka Unakule gulo Ngaba wakanya enkole eno Ekiteso kuchino chilete duo mbaka wakampala Muhammad Nsereko Murutula wa Parliament Oruwa Lero The uncertain taxation that is there and the high-handed methods of plowing this tax. I was talking about the top-up and after the top-up, when the traders present their goods in the shops, they are stopped again and asked to pay another tax in form of another top-up. And we have to talk about that. Bill of lading. It will show the values of what have imported. So these values are already captured in the tax, in the taxes that we've passed. Give me a tax once and for all. If you give me a tax, then you will go ahead if you want. There, there is either double taxation, not uncertain taxation. No, no, I'm talking about the canons of taxation. Mm. One, there is uncertainty. The concerns of Honorable Nsereko is the demonstration that is in downtown. It is a demonstration which is in downtown. Advise him to come in a proper way by a matter of presenting a petition from the traders. And when this petition is presented, it is referred to the appropriate committee, and that's when we will have a public hearing. We will be invite all the stakeholders. That is finance and trade. Trade. So I would advise him to come with a proper petition, signed by the petitioner, the traders, and the matter be referred to the committee. Currently, as we speak, there is a lot of deployment, military and security deployment in the business centers around Chikugo, Nasa, Nakasero. It should be, not that parliament is inconsiderate, but we are actually past the laws in this house. Now, the issue of administration, I think, is where the member is raising concerns. And, uh, right honorable speaker, you have guided. We need to listen to all the parties. And what Honorable Nsereko is raising is very, very important. Very important. That should not only stop here. This must be interrogated and we must come to a solution to this. The Committee of Trade and Committee of Finance must do a public hearing with these traders. Can you conclude? Beto yongira yo akulira oludda oluwabula government mu parliament jolo senyonyi asabye kitongole ekiwozo omusoro kiwara e okogerezaganya naba subuzo okukola ku nsonga zaabwe akubanga omusoro gulina okusolozebwa mu nkole nnungam bwabadde akwasibwa okwemulugunya kwaabwe okuba mu bakampala city traders association kasita senyonyi asabye enkola ya ifris fdk kanyamberege esoke imirizibwe okutusanga yuwara e yeterezeza Abakulumizo kwa mbibina, ebitaba abasubuzi okuli echa Kampala City Traders Association Kasita United Arcaders Entrepreneurs Association ni Kampala Traders Advocacy Forum baduki demo ofisi ya kulida uludolufu kanya government in parliament okubata asa kuiva somo za na dala kuunkula ya EFRIS wabade ayanja ebili mchiwandi kuchino sentiwe waka sita Dr. Thaddeus Musoke agamba sicha wenkanya echitongo lechiwoza echa yuara e okuni kizengkula ya e receipt ngaba subozi tiba sumese dwashimala kuunkula ya yo the just... Uganda Revenue Authority could for the meantime stop being harsh 
and forcefully implementing the system to our traders who have a very great negative attitude towards the system. Zef Musoke Agamba in Kolaya Efris, Esusi, Okubanyi Giriza, Mokuba Gerekira, Emi Solo, Chiaga Matioli Business Yakusigala, Kuchikacha Technology Ono. Abamu, Kubachi Kiri De Abasubuzo Kuvamu Business is in Jaulu. But I guess it's anti in Kolain Oya Efris, Buryomu, Emoko Sabuwe, Ngabam Bagamba, Bakakiwa Okfuno Mukozi, Ateke Dua, Okudu Kanya Technology Ono, Atenga Abali, Mumorimu, Gokutunde Bioma, Bagala, Bakiri Zibwe, Basasulevi, Tundukumi Vita Nokchkumi, Okuingi Zakuno, Ebiama Gosibiabwe. And so, Chevanga to Jacob Solomon Jamaica. Mudevi. Kwa <laughs> Tukasa sule inga of the 18%. Tukasa sule omurundi kumu. Je tutuuse wano. Tusaba. Bemuwa mutese vitesu. Tutesese kukukazi ya wetu sorozo omosoro e walala. Akuli yorudu oruwa wala government mparlamenti. Jojo senyo nyi asubiza okuongeza yensonga yaba no mparlamenti. Eyo ngerwe okubaga nyisibu wako ebiru wazo. Tusigalinga tuoli za uutalibu mativu. Mumirembe. Na tutambuli ya kumateka, elea tukamba polisi, abantu manu, tutuwa tuke, tuke kwa kwenye mbeira. Tuwa uli denti, bageza kwa kaka abantu amu, mungule wa maduka aga mulu wa mpaka, ii, bebateka mwaka senteka awe. Avaka, mparlamenti, avataliba mu, na waba wade endoza za awe, kuchino. Kisho ni, avasu buzi jebalese, tuge nda kumana masajia, kufloya parlamenti, okula vange ita umangu, recommendation no kusaba kwa wako na, Okula wanga kuteke wa mungkola. Kuwanga ifiz. Bobo chitu nulide. Mashini wazi kula buwa nana. VAT. Ngeri nya kwele gamba. Value added tax. Gwe msoro. Go. Kuwa. Kuwa liu joba. Jogo tadeko. Na yenga. Agusasuri la dara. Ye. Yari asemba yu final consumer. So. Te wandi ba dewo. Any reason. Ereta. Oklashinga. Wakati uwa. Nanyi ni duka. Now you are a Dinafka Farida. Ne Gloria Gwita Benji or Parliament. Matchari Kunsonga Yemu Abasu was a Begatam Chivina Chao Federation of Uganda Traders Association Futa, but the Riza Kunsonga Yoko Karaka Sanga Be Murugunya Kunkola Ya Ifris, Ya take a watch tongue with Chuoza, or Kurondo Laibium Solo. Abasubuzi be Murugunya and Korea to Vajita Gira and Gabagara you are a ya kwe seba tegera wa wachiri ya somese obuta samukono wabuda wa gamba bachikoze wa basubu zikola kunusimbi zaidi ila wa basubu zano kusinka na mkule mbezo ya guanga sisi mjebale sisi manye ya value added haka akuma kebaga la tugule kagula milioni bili chitundu e, chintu wacho tetusabu la chiko la kubanga abantu wabadi mu downtown yeno bantu tebaso ma kuto geze duwa konti waluo banabatu ndaka mukamu na wamu chikubo mwebali Obabe tuandi sebali teiro, bali teiras. Boba sasa wande wa gulawa maduka gawe, orua lero, nti ba chunda mwe vintu vine biaidi. Awamu kwa sowozi ba gamanti wa denga guli gote, na ya mangu dala okwe kala kasa kwa kugenda mama so. Tugenda kuzumi ngane weekend ya, ego tuai sisi au message ya fire sasa tu kaiwewo, soko tu fune zaidi, me after zaidi tuja tuja. Bachile mire mojigenda mu maso nga bebi okweri ndabala una siku banga wabira uo abatabangule mire mbe. Sabo wandisi wa Federation of Uganda Traders Association FUTA na miuka sentiba wechibina chino wa gamanti ya kaungezi ke guloba sinka nyawakuro kufamu government. Banu nibaba tegeza ntiba kusinka na mkule mbezo wa guanga president Museveni mubanga lianzingo sato. Kwa etifana nye choshe mwafu nye guro. Wecha ala gidua kumikutu ya mweji no. Bakama wafe, bata andiso tukonta kitinga. Ni wabela oba government officials, abatu tukiride, nebatu ita, nebatu buze nsonga za fe. Netu magala tuwa nyonyona ne offices ya tuzenga tutukamu na mababu na tukabalaga. Magala tumitinge president, tumubuli nsonga za fe. E, natu tukiriza ndi mwetuna mumitinga, 
Esonga za fezigenda kule wako. Kubanga ba mulimba. Elacho vola baba deba luanda chinene nyo. O kula wanga. President. Tamanya songa zino. Aitua katatumu meeting. Ngane pali ya meti weli. Ngane finance weli. Tubabuli ne songa za fe. Na wabe waze eko. Ngane iwala e weli. Mwane vikuwe kwetwe vile. Evyo kwa te mali za fe mchibuga. Osasude kili ya lesi ya iwala e. Osasude iwe ni biesi. Atene ba kukuata, mpio za sude under value. Chokaba na waga amante, ba kuongira ya kedi moka awe. Kavunate ba senka na mkule mbeze we guanga presidenti Museveni, mbudo we saliranga we baso we zidua. Kwa mbeze so mbolo kutuula, neko lo musolo, nga buengu wani no kugua. Ochiteke lando, wade na kusatu wakuwe bulo. Nga zita niko kaunti ingi wolo alelo, okutuka kuflai de. So katulinde. Na yo kulindo oku, tegu genda kuhimiliza kwe di ima kwa fe. Kwa sa tuzino singazi guwako, nge subi de batu tademu tebali tukiliza. Tu batu ino kuderiva na fe, netuba nyonyola. Chetu isemo, chetu tuseko, ntibana ye batu limba mulu indi, oba batu, 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 batu ugusa. Kuchewa kule mbeze baka saito kugenda mluchikore guango lukuro kuteme mpendezo kugonjo la moksi kwa mugwa. Banuwa gamanti tebabali na mosubi. Kasita yari pato vasi na ine emalane etuwa ukanamu. Uruobi obufuzi. Yari ya yagala tujiwe e, bifevi singa. Nge yagale fuke umbrella bode. Atenge chitufu chavyo nechareta association ni sisi nezenja ulo mugwanga. Kule mereluwa kwa kasita. Aba subuzi. Baba yu nebala banga kasita tema kone deshi mara. Nebata adika kwa association zenda loku kugeza kwa kweru wa nidira. Nakasa gavaila amane Ivan Juko wewa kusaki dembo zeno. Ezo zenso unga za ifris mwasubu zi tuvudeo. Hapa kutile chitongle cha Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, UBC, Banjuli Dolichikoru wa yoro fuzi. Enteka teke emi ya kesa tu, jiba subi do kutambuli za ke chitongle. Chino wachikola, okulabe engeli ya batula kuruchiko lufuzi, jiba sobolo okuongira mwebi inzo kubanga bibulamu, ateno okutambuli da wamu, okutu ukiriza enteka tekeyo. Enteka teka, etade kumuanjobu iya, ne teknolojia, ebi kuatagano bulu njine ebi dhubi wabi ogwanga, ebi omunu njogu okusatu, echi guwako mbili, abili muetano. Dr. Constantine bituwa ike ngono mkugu ya yanjuri dolu chiko lufuzo rudukanya chitongle cha UBSA reporter. Enyinyula biba subi la kusimba kesila mubange li imea kesa tuwe jija. Chiyamba UBSA ukuongiru kuwele za wana Uganda. Ngobu vunanyi zibuwa ujiwebu wa wabulambika. Kumanyi NDP siri ila ya promote zinyo program jiweta digital transformation. Kachovola weno plan. Bagitade mbubu untu nyo wuo ibintu nyo biyo kola ngabila bikola digital transformation okufuna ebintu ebyo mulembe omulembe gwa teknolojia abantu bauliza tebachia uliza nyo ku ne bateka ku simu ne bauliza ne bateka ku ku ku, ku youtube ne bauliza so plan ene geze ko kubikwata nyo mwali pota yubise nokola yo kukunga abantu okuchusendo oza nge chintu echikuru miyake satu ejijja kubanga chibayamba okumanya program za government nokuzitambuliranga mu okubajja mu bwavu nokwekula kulanya tuli mukulaba fenga UBC tugenda kukola chi echenja wulu echigenda okutumbula e, omutindo gwa fe mukuba weleza amauli de mukuba weleza ebifa mu gwanga ne kuba weleza Programu za government, tuziba tusiza kwa tutia. So, chetulimu kati, either tu, tu ne, ne board of directors, uh, ne management, tu wijisemu, either binji bietu, 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 bietu labie, tu gendo kubanga, tu nonya sente, okufa mba, mba, mba nama kore do, abala, abate kwa ulangu, ni mu government ye njini. Agaba, ilano kudayo kuteka we nkula abantu babu li jezi wa suburo kuulizi ganyane yubisi butelevu. Okumanyo buetavu wabwe, na wawe batamati de, chiyambe yubiso kukula programu estunolira, okubaganyula. Akulilo li... Na yefe, nga chitongole cha government, tetulimu kufuganya. Tuwa gala fena tukuatide wamu, tulabenga tuzi imbe guangali, na tetulizi imba tutia, Kuba ama uye chintu cha muendo nyo. Aba tu chetu, chetu balaga. E, biche vigenda mumaso mwonsi. Tuwa gala tutamuli tutiangaba na Uganda. Okwe jamu wavu. So fenatu kwa atide wamu. Tedi avuganya mune. Tulimu tuli 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 struggle. Ngabu tuogele na kuzimu. Struggle ya kola chi. 
kweja mubuavu. Akulido luchiko lufuzo la UBC Dr. James Tumsime. Ategeze zanti alipotene kwa taganye bulonji na ente kateka ze guange zo mtendelo guokusatu. Ezi guwako mbili avili muetano. Tunonya evi ntu ya tuandiko ze bulonji na inga tetulikora bulonji. Tuagala tulikore bulonji e, chituyambe chituyambe UBC o ukore biaba aba aba uri zaba fi biaba gara Dr. Tumusime ragumiza nti guno musingo gwa kwe kubamu tochi no kule ngerebi ya mumaso chiyambe ukutuka na nembira yomu lembe guno Tueta aga ku kwa gana government etuweleze voti ya fi ni tutagenda kukuita ministry mu other departments kubanga batu wa emiru moja ukukora minji Tumbro mtindo kwa vye njigiri zaku, vye obula mbuzi, vye obuli mi, national, this national PDM. Nanyiziba kubia nsimbi kuluchiko lufuzi mu UBC, tulia hikayo Mary Paula, asime government, rubu tasuli la UBC, kubanga lino lieli soli ya government. Chikulu uche tuagara, kukulaba nti omutindo kwa digital migration gute kwa mungkola kwe gamba eluanga e guanga liaferio na lifune obuweleza kwa UBC ukutuwa lila wamu ente kateka ya UBC ya miake satwe jija kwa taga nabulu unji na ente kateka ya government ya range sila liteke dua kukutumbula enkola za digital nze sudat kaye mukampala Yubisirero echa geda maso. Umula muzi aiza haka mwata wakote nkuru. Eoze saa ejana gomola enakawa. Eganyo kukiriza mwere katanga. Na muanduo msubu zenu ya katanga ukwe imirirwa. Katango ono awere nemba na misango jaa kutemula ba. Akote ya mganyo ukwe imirirwa. Ngega mante wa msango guwedo kuteka teka. Ela kugena kutate kukulirwa. Atenga tewoi na bujurizi uvamu komera. Nitipache asobola kumuja anja vila yo. Sabiti ya wede mwere katanga, mchwala wumogenze henwe katanga, nga ita mbana mateka abe, ya sawa koti ya nkule wadha semi sango jani na gomo la mkampala, mmaso gomo na msa Isaac Mwata, okutewa kukakaluka koti. Ona mkuleta okusawa kudu mkoti ya tegeza koti, nga wainu obuvune we yafuna, nge nakuzo mwezi bili o mwezo kwe kuminogu mwaka kwa nkumi bili abili mwezi sato, boyali mwaka age, edanga yeta gobu janya bia usinga kubu wafuna mkomeleru zida. Wabula kusaba kuono kona kwa waka njiziboru doru wabi. Nga lukule mbira mu Jonathan Mwaganya. Boru wate geza nchi wanajia kutata ganyo kuno nina zoku gena maso musango guno. Enanga chino chaka kasibwa mkoti. Omusirikale wa polis ASP oju, ojuko. Omusirikale wa polis ASP ojuko viviana. Omulamus aisa kama watu uluva nyuma leuke kenenye nsongo kufaku njuu hizo na. Mbwati ya kala ambido kutamole katanga kakaluka koti. Uh, Mbwati ya kala ambido kutamole katanga kakaluka koti. Appeared substantial. The above findings dispense with the need for them in the matter. Having considered all the circumstances of this case and in view of all the foregoing, it is my view, considered view, that the application for bail is denied. The ends of justice will instead be best served by he hearing the main case. Accordingly, the application for bail is dismissed since the case has been. Already fixed for trial, the parties are advised to prepare for the trial. It's so fine. Wadenga mwale katanga ya tegeza koti ngaba yeta agobu janjabi. Obusinga wafu na mkumele iruzira. Wabulo mwana msa Isaac mwata ategeze zanti. Tewali chuwandi kochu na chaa ete duwa kufa mkumele. Ngachira ganti ono obula dewa ina tebu sobola kujanjabi buangali mkumele. Mwchina akala ambido kumuta kukakalu. The medical officer must certify that the condition of the accused person cannot be managed in prison. I perused all the medical reports on record and there is no such evidence. Accordingly, the absence of a certification from the prison is that her condition is grave and cannot be managed while she is in prison. This ground cannot succeed. On the question of advanced age, advanced age means the person who is 60 years of age and above Abolo ganda ramu kwenye zehemu kata ngolo vanyo malo kuli ni nsa la yomo na mazi balaza sanyo ili nsusu. It's the supreme judge we serve. I have no words. I just glorify his name. 
mole katanga kati wetu ogerera mole katanga kati wetu ogerera nga akomibwa mu komere ruzira wari rede turrede ogenda masalo musango kati gera musango no masalo musango gurirwe wabanga tayaza musango wa mute fenda tsanyuke wabanga yaguza wa musibe fenda tsanyuke mole katanga abunali wa musango go kutabawe henwe katanga ngona guvunali bane bala baba lala babiri okulika kwanza patricia Martha Nkwanza, Sakono Msao Tai Charis. Wamuna yari omukozi makaga wa manjire George. Wabula abana wano jebufu deko baate wa kakalu kakoti. Inze na mamonde Deborah. Akusaki Debino. Kale kiliza nkumu zemu kuma wane chitundwe choku bidi. Tovao. The general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source What's of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just take a polite loan of 200 k to stock my shop. The signs are symptoms of success. The back commander, the back tailor. Why hustle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tinge. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Junko, yo, how are Chico? Chick the shopping man, what's your secret? We got on. Have you heard of the Paris Development Model PDM? Yes, I did, but I thought it was just a talk. I know, so what, yeah. Mm. It is real. Mm. I and a few friends together mm -hmm. formed a circle, accessed money from the PDM, mm. invested in a portrait project, mm. and now things are moving. What's going on, my Junko, I thought I was one of your friends. You are. But you left me behind. I didn't leave you in poverty. Mm. No, what you do, uh -huh. just visit your LC to chairperson and your parish chief eh? mm. and start the process of economic transformation mm. eh, just like that mm. <laughs> the parish development model is an initiative from the government of uganda mm. through the ministry of local government mm. designed to transform all lives of ugandans for the better <laughs> pdm my parish my development my life Ebisiya <laughs> MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited, a Rungan is Bank and Kuruya Uganda. Nyati Motion Pictures brings you Tuko Pamoja, a documentary film about our unity as Ugandans and Africans. Minoro would have simply created a East African community that we are looking for today. The rulers of Minoro are actually Luos. We people who live across the Nile, we are so related from army or from just the Nile. Who are the same people and genetically we are even the same people. We are similar people. We are one. Pamoja, we are one. Use that word, Pamoja. Premiering every week from 3rd February to June 2024 at the National Theatre and Indira Centre. Daily screenings are from 4th February to June 2024 at Ham Cinemax and the National Theatre. To get a ticket, call 0778-787-660.
UBC lero echagira maso tukomyo ne kitundu echo kubiri abavuzi ba taxi yabegatira mu chibina cha Fly Express Travelers Association NTV aba wadda basira mu bya server bya ID ne abayoza yoza oloku malako obulunje kisibo abasira mu na mugwanga bakarati dwa okusigala nga besimbu sako no kuongera okoleso obumu nga bogubadde mu kisibo Gabaduba alabete kikiro kujia kuzaidi unako ulencho lvanyu malo kumala kechi sibonge mkumpazi robu siramu. Aba siramu wabakulia kupaka ya Fry Express NTV. Baku biduwe nkata hivi ya sababu ya ID. Bino hivi wakua sidua NTV wawe pita kagua. Na haba yuza yuzo vokuwe wa hivi batu ukilize mkumpazi robu siramu mkulu. So, abanafu wa siramu. Ndama deni no kubasi wigula kubanga na wako mzima ane, etukula na wako, kwa mzima fengo na wasinga wa sajwa wacho, wasinga wa mwaka kazi wa So, na Sote tukama jikisibo chuwe de, kato natacha hako na chi, natacha hako laba. Na uchua kuzi, tuchukwa liwa mungu wa mungu. Fanya simu siramu. Hei, asumudu nikula wa kufanya wa siramu, baido kufuna yaka, nito wande wa siba. Hei, natukwe wa tasebo. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alamina, mungu, abawe baraka, atai awagwandeze vichimbeche muangali. Awa siramu bona, baadari zaidi ya nungi, mwewa le kusiba, mwe kumbi le mpise nungi, nga wetu wa demo saumu. Ukwasi za kawa siramba nunevia sava, bachikozo ukubala ganti balibumu wakati mungkola yemilimu. Newa nkuba denga ba ukana mwuzi kiliza. Yo mwoto kwa kubizo kwa zobuja, mwumpisa ze, mwuna mwwe, mwintuwa iba denga kwa chikate chintu chiba chanja ule nyefu ya haba na dini. Zinu national ideas za wa customer. Mumbera ye mwona kuhondewa na Uganda babulu wa kebi ntubi ya wengenda ga mtu. Driving permit za kone mikubwe mirala. Okuminu na kuya fesi za abwe. Aba sawa ze wa fengo na abadi niya Fly Express. Ntebi ntubi ya mtu wina. Nisi gara matu kumatoka. Nitubi teka mo ofisi na ite mwenja bilo. Nola tuina driving permit inga chukumi. Tuina national ID. Tuina case. Eze mwini mwini ntubi ya abana. Tuna kese zimu mitu vya avuli jo, tuina mashini zeze ya ulo ze tamani, so mje ku office. Okusibu leno kudizomu siramu sikiabu wazei, unundu nge mpira zi wazidiro ya abachi kozei, nga ita mkusibu leno ya abasi hivi, sinachindi ukuya kwa tiaka abata isobola, nga abachi kola, bafundi kila biwangu li dempero kufambu waka 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 tonda, ne wakuba denga bili bicho, baba siramu kufambu pake zenja ya ulo mchundu bie tebe, stali zimu, bata andisokwe yu nebi alu, wakati mkwete kila tekilo kusala idie subilo kuba ulo na kuwencha, wamuno kutende zomu tonzi, okumweba zoku mama zake nina kunga basi iba, nze sula kakukube, Mwana mchibuga chetebe. Kala akade kanto la ganyiza kiliza angusibulile wano nze jethro kasaiji. Na yusuf senyo moku wabana fawa kwe soli mirobo nero. Tukusibude. UBC Inspiring Uganda.